Talking about be ready, isn't that right? Uh, that's my get up there, isn't that right? Y'all all right? Whew, it's good to be alive. And you know, there's somebody gone, but I ain't in that number today. I'm in the number with the living this morning. I don't know what tomorrow gonna be like, but today I'm with the living, isn't that right? And got a mind on bed at the bar, isn't that right? Then wake up, then have, they want to go commit no guitar. Isn't that right here in my mind? I said, I want to be keeping what Yahuwah set up and established. My goal is to meet Mr. Yahuwah in Shalom. Isn't that right? So I keep coming back to make sure I make it right while I'm on this side. Good to see one of my good old friends, that joy, that good to see him. Press it way on out to see him. I appreciate it. So we go way, way back. So we go way, way back. Isn't that right? Yeah, goodness. Way, way back. And he say, found by Yahushua and Yahuwah. That's it. That's the way, ain't it? That's the way. I know why they fall and realize, man, ain't but a few. Ain't but a remnant. You said, though the, the uh, seed of Ashur, uh, Yashara will be the sand of the sea. So ain't but a remnant going to be saved. Isn't that right? We was just talking about, man, folks, we know dead and gone and people gone. I tell you, won't be but a little bit of time. Isn't that right? He spared those he doing have recumb on those he had recumb. Isn't that right? Just like he told them when they came down to Asu and they came to your cold. He said, Asu, I hate it. He said, you're cold by heart. They called him Esau. Isn't that right? He told me, he said, I hate it. Just the thing that Mr. Yahuwah can have on their mind, I hate you before you even got him. Yeah. Isn't that right? That's why I'm a preacher. That's why the thing we got, we call con. Yeah. Grace. Isn't that right? Because you certainly can earn it. Yeah. Not when the man give it to you before you can do any work. That's how we understood. Think about it. Your covenant hadn't even done any work. You know, the book said neither one had done good or Rasha. Not one of them. He said he just chose out and said that the elder going to serve the younger. Yes, what you going to do with that? As a matter of fact, all the years we've been back out, we've been doing stuff, not knowing how your life going to go, no understanding. And the fact that Mr. Yahuwah are already predestinated, I got something better for you. I'm appreciative. That's why I said I wasn't serving. I wasn't serving no nothing. I ain't looking for nobody else. I ain't searching for no Islam. I don't want to search through none of that garbage. They can keep it. I done seen the end of it. I done seen the end of that stuff. It ain't got nothing to it. I don't need to go nowhere. I ain't got to go get no 70 women waiting to go to no so-called heaven and get no 70 women. All I got to do is get some crack rock. You get all the women you want. Is that right? Just bust them down. Just take some dimes and bust them down. You, know, you got to go way up there to get 70? Man, I'm striving for something more than that. I'm looking for eternal life. Isn't that right? I'm looking to meet the man in Shalom. That's my whole hope. That's my expectation. When I lay down, when I get up, my expectation is to meet him in Shalom. Y'all all right? It's good to be him. Matter of fact, what time I think the Yari comes in at what, 1.30? Two o'clock, you know, the yard come in and signify new it'll signify Kudash for us, which means it'll be what they'll call a new moon. Isn't that right? This will be our seven yard. Who are gracious? Allows to be him, isn't that right? We had to catch it when they coming in, isn't that right? They had a, the blowing of the shafar. Yes, sir. Isn't that right? Yes, Got him make sure we listening. That's the whole thing with serving Mr. Yahuwah. Want we'll to make sure you are listening. Right. That's what Musha when he called it, but what he wanna do. He want all Yashara to hear. And I, if you hear it, then you can be obedient. You can't be obedient if you can't hear. A lot of stuff we take for granted. You know, years ago, um, the way we come through and the way we've done things, we grew up with a religion that our parents had, that our parents took from their parents, from their parents. We trace it down, we all got it from the slave master. Everything the slave master got was conducive to keep us a slave. Everything that Mr. Yahuwah gave us was to free and give us liberty. That's what we seen Moshe as, somebody who was a liberator. You know, right here before that time, he was a liberator. Somebody to come and take a people who was in an indigenous situation and bring them out. You know, we thought that Mizraim was our home at one time. You stay somewhere 400 years, that's where you from. We were there for 430 years. Why we wouldn't be for now? It's only natural to act and conduct yourself like a Mizraim. Mizraim. You've been in America for 400 years. Why you think you dress and you act like a marriage? Why you think you get up and pledge to a flat? You've been here so long, it become your home. But we're going to testify that Abraham and them. We seeking one to come. That's the truth. We seeking something to come. This is definitely not our home. I continue to tell our people, I will not take rest. Well, this is not our home. This is who has something better prepared for us. It's time for our people to wake up and get conscious and realize that. Now realize, stop putting your law in America. Stop putting your law in white folk government. Stop putting your law, putting it, which is your heart. Stop putting your heart in this stuff. Our heart got to be set toward Mr. Yahuwah. Yes, Y'all all right? Yes, sir. That's it. That's how I want to leave here. I want to leave here in Shalom to meet. I don't know what to befall me once I get to that end when I leave him. But one thing I do, 
I won't be ready. Yes, That's all I'm saying. That's something. It ain't, and y'all, son, it don't make no sense for me not to be ready. Yes, right. I've been told to be ready. Yes, it don't make no sense. Don't you know he said the good man of the house had known which why the thief would come. You know he said what he did? He would have won. Craig, you tell me you come to my house at 3.30 this afternoon. I'm finna get out of here now. I ain't finna get that no 3.30. I'm getting there early. Cause I need to be ready when he comes. I need to meet him at the front door. I didn't catch him when he swing in the driveway. Now, Mr. Hood done told me he get ready to come in. Why would I make preparation to be ready? Why would I make sure my house set in order? Why would I make sure that I'm living the corner where the man called me? You know the man coming back. If he come back, he's going to be restitution. We're trying to be ready for judgment. You all right? That's all right. Yeah, he's just a baby. You know, he's just a baby. All right, we're going to get ready. We're going to see what does say Mr. Yahoo. Isn't that right? All right. Now we're going to let him sign it out. I guess at 2 o'clock he'll sign it again for us. All right, I'm going to sign another Shafar. All right. We'll turn and we'll pull out. Eternal Kudash Abba, the only true and the, the only right Allahim, we call upon you seeking redemption through your dam, which is your blood. Ask you to purify us by your dabarim, which are your words. Ask you to let your debar rest, rule, and reign in our mortal bodies, which is your word. We ask you to be a keeper and a protection unto us as you shabbat to our Abraham, Yatsakat, Yaqob, the Yahudim, and Yasharal. That which you, you committed unto our trust, let us keep. We ask you to search us and see if there be any rasha ways, which is wicked. Cast it from us and lead us in the way everlasting. Let the bar of our mouth, let the meditation of our love be accepted in your sight. We ask you to barak those that are watching on, that are watching in, which you bestow a gift. We ask you to barak those that are seeking, that are calling upon you. Barak those who we have committed unto you in by shim, which is by name, and by condition, by situation, that you will grant unto them the favor they might, that we all might receive the Ruach HaKadosh, which is your spirit of separation. We ask you to give us an understanding that we don't serve you in vain. We ask that you look down from Shamaim where you sat, and you acknowledge us as your own uh, Adah, which is your foe or your congregation. We ask you to keep us from that which is the common destruction that we might make ready to meet you in Shalom. And as we prepare to move further in this service, we pull out that you take full control, that you get the Kabud, which is the glory, and the Kabad, which is the honor. In the Shem of Yahushua, Yahushua HaMashiach, we pull out. Let us all say, Amen. Yeah. Woo! Ain't y'all right? Yes, all right? I tell you what, boy, when time come in, you don't move it fast as you used to move. I just be quick to get around. They had to take it, took me a little time to stay around that morning, but we making our way. Ain't that right? Huh? Oh, the other boy, yeah, we might use the other one too. All right. We put on a little work last night, didn't we? I did circle this right here, so I know I want to keep that. Did, did y'all need a picture of this before I erase it? Did everybody have it? Did anybody need a picture? Everybody good? Uh -huh. I know sometimes people didn't get a chance to get it and they want to take a picture of it. Y'all understood about the shadow? Yes, sir. Alright, trying to make sure. What we say our shadow was? Uh uh, that type. It's what? That's right. That's how you get a shadow. Anytime something intercepts light or ore, that's how you produce a shadow. Isn't that right? So when Yahuwah told us there's no shadow of turning in him, what do we understand? There's no interception. Isn't that right? Well, everybody good? Yes, well, it, it, makes a, it, it always makes better for us when you understand what, you, what you're reading, what you're being taught. We, no more what we learned years ago, we just went through a practice and we didn't understand. That's why people never advance. It just, our people think we advance because we changed clothes and got jobs and money, but we didn't ever advance. There's no, nobody uh, that's of an honest intent would ever show you where our people ever advanced. We never went anywhere. We're in the same place. All we did was like we was in Vermont, but we sat there for 40 years. 400 years we've been in America, we've been in Vermont, but they call it a wilderness. Yeah, that's right. And Yahuwah put it there for a reason. He needed all those people that came through before to die off. Yeah. That's the only he put us there. I don't want to get Romans. Y'all know we're going first, right? Why we use Romans? 
That's right. You always got to have a basis for what you're doing. So you have people about Jesus. They'll just tell you that because he first loved me. That's not no reason to serve no Jesus. Everything people tell you is just something that already somebody just told them. Nobody ever researched it, never understood. You just went through it. Everybody want to tell you about the mysteries and all the hidden truth. But that's what Yahuwah came to do. He come to try to unravel all the hidden truth. You can't serve nobody no mystery. <laughs> you got to have, have understanding. That's the truth, man. That's what he came for. Isn't that right? Why you get ready? Um, they don't start me up over there yet? Ladies and gentlemen, what you are about to hear is based on a true story. But names have been changed. Tony Smith, clock in and get to work. Yes, sir. That's it. Ain't that right? I got my orders. Ain't that right? I'm gonna get that. Let's get that Romans chapter 15, verse 4, so we can make sure we got our base. Why you get us set up on screen? Romans chapter 15, verse 4. Listen to the book. For whatsoever things what, what? were written aforetime. What was it written for? Were written for our learning. For what reason? That we, through patience and, and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Well, that's what we're looking at, right? So we talk about the type of people. What kind of people need hope? Huh? Say so what? Somebody in distress. So let's go look at the book of Oriah. They call Luke, chapter 24. Uh, see if there's about verse 12. They call it Luke, but the type, of, the proper name is called Oriah. It means Yahuwah shining, right? So what we learn about that? What in the shadow? No shadow. Isn't that right? That's what he came to do. See, when we saw the law, the law was a shadow. It was an interruption of the or or. Right, right. Isn't that right? Not that it was deception, but it was that interruption. Right. But then he came along with Yahushua when he came. He said, I can do away with the shadow. Yeah, right. And now you can just deal with the very image, which means not taking away the shadow. Yeah, right. The shadow also will refer to or will use with the circumcision. See, the whole time it can't, it's, come, it's removing. Is that right? Because what the, what the covering of the head of the foreskin, the foreskin of the man's penis does, it's a covering. So it's an interception. It's a cover up, right? Anytime you got a veil, it's going to hinder your sight. That's right. Right? That's right. And what you think you see is not actually what it is. Hello? Right. Y'all don't understand that? All right, let's come on. Let's see what happened. He said, now, whatsoever things are written for a time, written for our, what was it? Learning. That we through patient comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Might have hope. Let's see what happened in the book of Oriah 24 and 12. Let's see something. Do, 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 do. Barashith. They're going to call it Genesis. Proper name is what is it? What does Barashith mean? In the beginning. That's right. <coughs> 37 and 1. Listen to the book. Then arose Cuff and ran into the sepulcher. And stooping down, he That's right. Not Peter. His name is Cuff. That's the name that Yahushua gave him. It means literally a stone. Listen. And stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves and departed, wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. Yeah. And behold, two of them went that same mule to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs. Yes. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together, in reason, Yosha himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. So what happened? And he said unto them. Hold on, stop for a second. So what happened? What happened? That's right, a shadow. He said the eyes were holding, they should not know him. So we see that was an interruption. Y'all see that? An interruption. How did they not know him? Then some had developed it, didn't it? What did he say happened? And he said unto them. Hold on, bad man, what happened to him? But their eyes were holding. That what happened? That they should not know him. Let's see how that work. I hold what you got. So now give me the book of Barashith. They call it Genesis. Barashith. The bar, the B, Beth, is for N. Correct? House, Mishfakar, land, the Beth. You know what? It makes a difference now when we learn our language and understanding exactly what he's telling us. 
the whole book and all the writings just give us a better understanding. It gives us clarity, right? I sure hate y'all missed it last night. I was going to put a stance out for y'all. Since you missed it, I ain't going to do nothing today. I hold off to the next thing. <laughs> Listen to the book. This is Barashit. They call it Genesis chapter 37. Uh, see about verse 7. Let's say that what I want. Listen to the book. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field. That's not what I want. Make it 38. That's not what I want. 38. Listen. And ere Yehuda firstborn was Rasha in the sight of Yahuwah, and Yahuwah slew him. Let's do this. I remember I touched off the name. Let's put the name Error up down. Let's look at lexicon. Let's use Hebrew. We told you again that's not a literal word. We know it's Abari. Isn't that right? That's the other side. Which makes sense for us, right? Now we came out. What did we do when he brought us out Mizraim? Brought us on the other side. Isn't that right? So it makes sense for us. Everything we do, everything he gave him. When he took Abraham, he told him to come from his Abba's house. What did he say to him? What did he cross? Yeah, I think the Mediterranean. He crossed over. So that's the, our, our whole believing of what we do, it has a sense. Got it? We understand exactly how they came into the name Abari. The other side, crossing over. That's what we did. The book said we know that we passed from what? Move to how? That only makes sense. That means we've done what? You Abari. Right? We crossed over. How do we obtain this thing? Because we passed over from death unto, unto Kai, right? From Moot to Kai. Moot, death, Kai, life, eternal life. Right? All right. What did he say? How do we get eternal life? What did he tell us how we get it? To do what? To do what? To know him. That's right. That's right. This is that's right. He said, and this is Kai eternal, that they might know who? He said, the only true Allahim and Yahushua HaMessiah, whom he sent. He said, that, well, that's how we learn Kai. That's how we got it, through learning him and learning who did he send. Who did he send, right? Let's see what happened. Listen to the book. You want to turn your mic on, big man? And Yehuda said unto Unan, Go. Did eat. we put it up there? So we, oh, let's see, what, let's see what the name I'm sorry, I do a part. Er is what they'll put. We know anytime we see these disciplines, I told y'all about that. When we see that eat discipline, who we always associate this with? Greek, not Latin. We associate the I. When they put the I for Israel, we always associate that with the Latin. You got to remember the people that dominated you. When the Greeks came in, the Greeks gave, that's why they have Israel. Anytime you find the L, they're talking about Elohim, all that, then you're dealing with the Greeks. When you find the I, you're going to be dealing with it. And that's something we need. Our people been in such a, we've been, <laughs> we've been disrupted so long with these people. We just don't know. White people been playing us the whole time we've been here. The whole time we've been sitting around, we've been reading, we had no idea that everything been disguised from us. So now that we're learning now how Mr. Yahuwah is taking the, the, the interruption from Ahura from us now. He's moving it out of the way. This is stuff we wouldn't have thought about before. If it's in there, we were told that this was God's infallible word. We don't even know nothing about a God. We have an Allahim. That's right. Anytime you got a God, they're going to associate it to a whole nother, that's so you know, to a whole nother people. We don't know anything. If you had Abraham, you had Yaskak, if you had Jacob, if you had Mushan, you, you couldn't tell them what God is. They couldn't tell you. If you said, who is God? They couldn't tell you because they don't know nothing about a God. They know about an Allahim. We know that comes from the Allah. We know about strength. We know about protection. Isn't that right? We know exactly what the character is. What they tell us about a God don't make sense. It don't make sense. We talked about everything we got has to, it has to correlate inside of five senses. Got it? Everything you do had to, the stuff that they told you about God does not make sense. Okay. Let's see what this is in a way. I mean, watch for. The name of two is said, which will be Yasharal for. What does it tell us? It tells us anything else other than that. Is that all we have of him? I was just curious. Okay. Watch that. Well, well, we know this. So when you see this, this is the um. Y'all see this? We know this is the martyr, which we don't use the martyr. So you know that this is the um and not the olive, correct? Did y'all, how many of y'all didn't know that? So his name starts with the um. This is the um, not the olive. And then you see the, you see the rosh. This is what they do in the martyr. You see they got the vowel points on the bottom of it. So the um, and then you have the ah, uh, you have the rosh. If you actually know the A-Y, it would make the E sound. 
So what we have is we talked about before we have first and final form when it comes down to our olive bed, right? We know that the yah, the, the yah, the yard, they'll call it the yod. We don't have a yod, the yard. But now you find the yard in what? Where do we find the yard at? That's right, final form. That's what we learned. First and final form is important to us simply because of what? Huh? Say it again. First and second. What? Plant the seed when it comes up. Yahushua. Well, it parallels for us when we look at we will look at what happened for him. When we look at we have two basic breakdown of our book. We have a first and a final form. Right? When Allahim came to him and right first, what was it? Huh? No, I didn't say he was void. We said, what was he? He was Ruach. So then we come back and we find him in a final form. He came in the shape of a man. Yeah. So we learned first and final forms. Y'all got it? Mm -hmm. So a lot of this, when we find how our character works, that's why it's important for us to learn our Allah Bet, because our Allah Bet teaches us how different things work. When you even spell Abari, Abari going to actually be used with the Un and not the Allah. What is, let's uh, pull up the definition of what the, uh, what the Un is. So we can see what's important, what's the difference when you look at the um. Because some people say it don't make sense to them. An a is an A. That's the difference between us and when you deal with these other people. See, when you look at the Greek, when you get your alphabets, you're following the Greek discipline. All the Greeks did was took what you had and turned it around. The olive. When it came down to its next form, they came down with you got ancient, middle. This is called a middle. Right? The white folks gave you the, the alpha. Got it? So this is how we knew at first. Everything we did was in hieroglyphs. Right? This is the first writing we had with hieroglyphs. So with it being in hieroglyphs, we dealt with picture form. This is picturegram. This, this is not my best drawing. Y'all not just had surgery, so I can draw better than this. But you know, I don't want to boast in my living. So we know the olive, with it being a picture, they had to understand the characteristics of the olive, right? The olive would represent what? Strength, protection, clothing, because you can eat from it. It also represented food. When they want to know, could Allahim feed them when they was in Bamat Bar? Of course they could if it's the olive. You can eat from the olive. The olive could protect. The olive represented strength. So we start looking at the characteristics. Well, y'all won't be able to sit on this side. Just a few over here from the olive. The olive means to learn, teach, to utter, to make or to bring forth a thousand or thousands, family or taming an ox. That's what we knew it was. Right? So that makes sense for us because now we look here. We start looking at the middle form. The reason you have it in this shape because this represents a plow. So you had a man back here, he would be holding. So here he would have an ox. Just drawing ox. He would have an ox on both sides. Got it? So the teach or the tame would make sense because the elder ox would be the one teaching the younger ox. Got it? So all this made sense. All the Greeks did when they came along, they took your olive and turned around and told you it was an A. And told you it was an alpha. Y'all got it? So you just got to understand everybody created and took from you. Hello? Okay. I'm just trying to make sure we kind of got to understand. So we're looking at the difference of when you use the olive versus when you're using the oom. Um. So let's see what the oom um is. Can we put up on stage? Can we put up on that form? Okay, the pictogram. The oom. Um. So it looks like a what? A uh eye. -uh. So you see. Right? So now he told us something that I hadn't done. What was it? That's right. That means, because you're going to deal with your senses. There's nothing that Mr. Yahuwah gave you that does not correlate in your five senses. He said, I has not what? What else? That's part of your senses. And then what has he told you? So now you start dealing with feelings. Touching that part of your senses. Touch, smell, taste, hearing. Did I forget something? Insight. Is that fine? Some of y'all got seven. <laughs> Isn't that right? <laughs> so anyway, what we're looking at now, all this makes sense. So now we start looking at the um. So the ancient is here. This, this wouldn't be right. This would not be right. The ancient would be the first. Right? Picture ground would be ancient. This would be middle. 
this will be modern. This is what you saw then. This is the modern. This is when people came in and they said that Azura, who they call Ezra, that he came in, he reconstructed our Alabeth, and he came in, and this is the new writing system he created, which believe in created in a couple of months. You're going from a very sophisticated system of writing and saying you recreated it in three months, two and a half months, and you came back and gave it to us? A little difficult for me to believe. I'm just being honest with you. I had to watch these people because this is what everybody commonly use. Right. Then you're using vowel points. So right. you're using a whole different system. This is the problem I have with a lot of this. Is it something that the people that came before us, would they have understood it? Because there are certain things that happen that wouldn't make sense in the book of 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. Shaul, who they called Paul, said, I beseech you, therefore, our king, that you all do what? Be, speak to what? Amen. And that there be no what? Amen. I assure you, if I'm speaking by point, I assure you if I'm using this, and they use this system. This is the system how they knew him. This is how they knew him. They understood it. So the objects that they used were things they could correlate with. It only makes sense that when you come into a people and understand it, you got to be able to get to a people and reach them at the level of where they're at. Yeah. I can't come to somebody third grade, well, first grade, and start teaching them calculus right out. I got to get them the basis. I got to reach them from where they're at. Then you gravitate. You got me? But it comes down to understand all the heat. It all had to be the same. Because we all had to believe the same thing. We all had to speak the same thing. We all had to live the same concepts. So it wouldn't make sense to have all these different styles and writings. That's just me now. At least I'm honest. So now we look at the pictogram, the ancient. We look at what it is. It's the eye. It's to see. It's experience. It's sight and it's appearance. Y'all see that? Pleased. So what you think was that Allahim came and got us? Had to be pleased with us. To be able to give us information so the own would fit us. We'll use the own and not the olive when you come down to looking at us. You look at presence or you look at what we gain. Favor. We understand that, isn't it? That's how we got it. We didn't get this because we earned it or worked it. That's what a lot of people mess up at. We start getting so comfortable with doing something, we feel as though we actually earned it. We didn't earn it. We got it because of favor. Yeah. Mr. Yahuwah told him when he came out again, he said, I didn't get you because you were the most. He said, you were the fewest of all people. Even when he came to get us, he let us know. He said the other nation were worse than you. Yeah, that's right. that's all we, so we looked at everything we obtained with favor. Sometimes we come and serve it though, Mr. Yahuwah owe us something. I know, it, listen, I don't deserve anything Mr. Yahuwah can wear. It's health, strength, life, a mind, sight, a walking. I understand everything I got. It's because of favor. That's all it is because of favor. So now we start looking at knowledge. So this would make sense when you start to refer to us as Aubrey. Is the name for us. Aubrey. Aubrey. Y'all got it? This is how you were right. We talked about when we write in this system, what is this called for us? Transliteration. What is transliteration? Well, we're writing it in a form to where you can pronunciate it or enunciate it in its proper in its proper language. This nobody will understand. If I wrote this for Abraham, he wouldn't know what this was. Nobody would know this. The only reason we're writing because we're trying to get us to pronounce it in this language, Aubrey. Got it? And it means for us, we understand it. Having here, we don't understand what this is. We're looking at the um. So we're talking about sight. We're talking about favor. Not only that, we're talking about knowledge. Now on top of that, we're looking at a resemblance. You can get that from a shadow too. See, when our oil shines, it comes down. The only image that you're going to find that's going to come from that is going to be similar to what's actually, what's actually caught and made the interception of light. The object that made the interception of light, is a, the appearance is going to favor it. Got it? So that's what we're looking at for us. Let's see if we pick up something right quick. Pick me up at the uh, 3 and 16 of the book of Galatians. Let's see if we get a little understanding with that. Listen to the book. Now to Abraham. See that? Now to Abraham. And his seed. And his seed. Where the Shabbat made. That's where he made the promises. He said that's where the Shabbat made. He said who? Not and to seed. Which is S-E-E-D-S. -E -E as a who? Many. Not to everybody, but who? As of one. But as of one. And to thy seed. And to thy seed. Which is Mashiach. That makes sense. That makes sense. He's saying to your seed. See, the only way to listen, the promise, the Shabbat that Abraham made, that Allahim made to Abraham was concerning one. 
people just taking something, people just start literally just start saying things that don't really have an understanding. He never made it to you. He never made it to me. He only made it to Abraham concerning one. He only made it to one. The only way for it to become profitable to us or you become a benefactor to it was to entain or graft you into the seed. That was the only way for it to work. We actually had to do something that our law told us that we didn't do. We didn't gender seed where you cross them. We don't cross gender seeds. But that would have had, if he said to Abraham and to his seed, that's where the shopper was made. He said, I never said that to everybody. I said it to one. Then I said to your seed, which is the Mashiach. Which means it made sense when we knew him that they used the terminology and we called him son of man. Which would be Ben of each. Right? That was the only way for you to become a benefactor. So he had to come along and enjoin you to something that you didn't actually have. The only way you can get that is through favor. And the only way you understand it, you don't need knowledge. So now I'm going to have to give you something. At the book of Yah, I'm Yahoo, they call Jeremiah 3 and 15. See, when we better understand it, we better equip. Yes, sir. Isn't that right? Think about how do you get knowledge? Somebody got to teach you. Right. <laughs> he, and I just told you to Abraham and to his seed was the promise it made. So now we go back and look at like when we started Romans 15 and 4. That whatsoever things are written in four times, written for what? That we through patient might have who? That's right. When he told Abraham in the 22nd chapter of the book of Barmah, uh, Barashit, they call it Genesis, he said that in your seed, that all the, all the two Ladakh were going to be Barak. That's right. That they're going to say generation. He said, I don't know, but how is that going to happen? I'm going to have to intertwine them. I'm going to have to enjoy it. That's the only way going to make it work. That's what Musha did when he spoke every precept. He took Nam and he sprinkled the people in his saw. He had to see, you had to be enjoying to it. We learn enjoying it through who? Through our dawn, we can take that. But one thing we learn from it is from the marriage. When the husband and wife come together, the wife was supposed to give up dom. She was supposed to be a uh, Bethula, which you're going to call a virgin. So when they came together, once the husband had came in, he penetrated, he broke the ground, she was supposed to produce blood. That is still the covenant. That's how we understood it. When Musha said this is how he ensealed her, we understood that because the man knew when he came together with the woman he penetrated, she was supposed to produce blood. And that blood was supposed to be kept on the blanket. And he was supposed to fold up, he was supposed to keep it because that was symbolic to his covenant with her. Hello? People don't realize that was always supposed to be evidence. When people sit around and you saying that you have a relationship, where's your evidence? Where's your evidence? People, you know, they're saying, speaking, they talk a lot of stuff. People coming out there, these folk conjure up, which make absolutely no sense. Because you can't ever find where everybody spoke in these languages. If you've done it, there was only supposed to be one at the most, he said, too. And it's supposed to be done by turn, by course. Hello? Yes, <laughs> That's the only way a lot of stuff people do. It don't make sense. It made no sense for the buy, but when you've been sold a bad bill of goods, what do you do with it? You try to do, they say, you take the bed. When, you, when life throw you lemon, what you do? Eliminate. Throw that shit back at them. <laughs> You throw something in memory, throw it back at you. Why I got to take your shit and try to make something better out of it? It's your, this is your shit. That's you take it right. and do something with it. That's right. If it was any good, you want to throw it at me. That's right. See, people give you these concepts, you just start rehearsing. They don't make sense. Who throws something at you good? That's right. Then throw it back at them. That's right. <laughs> First thing they're going to get a picture. Go, you got to go buy a sugar. You got to go get a high guy. Go get a stir. You, you in the home. That's right. So all this stuff we look at, we just did that. That's what we, a lot of things we've been done. We just recite. We don't even understand it. Our goal is to make sure we understand. He gave us a title, and we want to know why and what does it correlate to. Now this is the book of Yahram Yahu. They call it Jeremiah, but the name Yahram Yahu means that Yahuwah is exalted. Rum. That doesn't mean rum. Exalted. Isn't that right? The book said, "Wherefore well, Allahim has highly did what? Rum. Rum. And highly exalted and giving him a what? A shim." Which is where? Where do we get a concept of that? On the two. Where? That's right, in Babel. They call it Babylon, which is, again, you're dealing with Greek and Latin again. You can't follow these people. The actual name would be, they call it, it was called Babylon. And what it actually means, Babylon, Babylon actually means the gates of God. That's actually what the name was. It actually means the gates of God. I don't know, what are people, that's these people, that's why I said, you think I'm going to listen to somebody smoke weed and try to tell me what something means? Right. Oh, I'm not going to sell these folks a bad bill of goods. All that I want for, all that I want for Jamaican folks is curry rice, right, curry goat, and some escovice fish in the area. Yes, that's yes, don't give me none of your dog and keep your music. That's right. It is a bad bill of goods. That's right. Because a lot of stuff people don't know. They don't know. They singing the same thing that the slave master gave up that the so-called Negro singing over here in America. Yep. We just don't know. Yep. We just start reciting stuff. We hadn't actually looked at it. 
So Babel actually refers to the gates of God. So when they came and they built the tower, the thing they tried to do was to get them what? A shim. And what did they recognize in order to get them a shim? They had to make sure it would be up. So when we learned that Allah had highly exalted him, we realized it had to be up. That's how we understood where he was and why they set him up on a, on a what they set him on? On a har. The har is the Aubrey word for a mountain. They had to set him up somewhere high. That's because they were looking to build a tower. And they were looking for their tower to reach the Shamaim. They were looking to build them a shim, which is a name, so everybody would see that shim. They said, unless they be dispersed. So that's what we're doing. We made sure when Alahim set him up on the two, which they called the cross, on the which they called the cross, and set him up on the heart, then we understood what Alahim was trying to do. He was trying to keep her from being dispersed. So we learned that concept. Again, whatsoever things are written in the fourth time, written for what? Well, why was it written? So we can learn from it. They had enough sense to realize that they need to get it up and it need to be high. In the book of Yeshua, he said, Behold my abode. What he say he's going to be about it? He should be very high. He should be extolled. So we understood. That's why when you read in the 19th chapter of the book of Yerukanon, they call John, you will find he said, They that watched. They knew. They knew. And the only way for them to watch is they got to have the oom. Which means they're going to have to have knowledge. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Which they had to understand appearance. Yeah, right. So what kind of people were they? Aubrey. They had to be Aubrey. Because Aubrey would know they would understand the concept. They had knowledge. They understood appearances. Let's see what happened. Let's see what happened. What I got you hold on. You still, what we're still holding in Galatians 3.16 to Abraham and to a seed. What the promise it made. He said not in the seed as a minute but to die seed which in the Mashiach. At 326. Oh, we didn't get Yahoo there, didn't we? Nope. Oh, let's get, I'm sorry, Yahoo. they called Jeremiah 3 and 16. Listen to the book. 15? Pull my thing down. I believe you want to fight me. What's out of the two? Oh, let me sign the Shafar. All right, for the sign. Let me sign that right quick. We got that. We got a break. And we acknowledge that this is actually the first in the seven, in which is Shabai. The Shabai Kudash, which is the word for new moon. We don't use new moon. It's actually called Kudash. Not Kudash, but Kudash. Y'all got it? So we recognize the, the Shabai. And in this, we're supposed to have the sound of the Shafar. Right? Is he up there? All right, let him blow. That book. See, that's what all the heathen called them back to obedience. Yes, we come out of the Christian church. I, don't know, I, don't know. I remember when I used to be an early Christian. We used to get up and pledge allegiance to the Christian flag. How many of y'all remember that? You did pledge allegiance to the United States flag, then you pledge allegiance to the Christian flag. We'll let you know they're synonymous. Because both of them keep you captive. The American flag and the Christian. That's all they use for captivity. All right, this is Yerm Yahoo 3 and 15. Listen to the book. And I will give you Ra'a according to my law. See that? He said, I'm going to give you shepherds. Ra'a. They're going to put pastors. But that's a Ra'a. He said, according to. And what does a Ra'a do? Cause you to see. Who going to need to see? That's right. Uh, Aubrey. Aubrey needs to see. That's right. So it's only going to be, what are you going to associate with Aubrey? Aubrey got to have a Ra'a. Because they're going to have knowledge. They got to have sight. They got to know appearances, right? Yeah. So all this is going to make sense. He said, now I'm going to give you a raw uh, according to who? You cut your mic off again? According to my law. See that? According to my heart, my law. We should do what? Which shall feed you. With what? With knowledge and understanding. So now he's talking about the raw. Uh. So he said, the raw uh, going to feed you. Who do we know that can feed you? The ox, the olive. The olive can feed you. The olive can feed you. So we understand. Because think about it. The olive also can do what? To learn, to utter, to make or to bring forth a thousand or thousands, family or taming the ox. So that makes sense. That's what the raw is going to do. A raw is going to have an adah. An adah is the operative word for congregation or flock, right? So all that makes sense. He said that Yahuwah was my raw. 
Right? He making me to lie down, and great, which means he did what? He tamed him. He tamed him. That's what you do. He's taming us. See, all these different things that I'm telling you about are things they understood simply because of our trade. Our trade were what? Husbandmen, they called it, which are farmers. And our other one would be a herdsman. They call them herdsmen, which means would have been raws. Right? That's what we did. You had to understand a flock. Hello? That's, I mean, you got to understand the concept, otherwise you're going to miss it. And that's what he said, I give you a raw for that's going to cause you to see so you can get knowledge, so you can understand appearance, so you can take away the breakage, to take away the interception of our ore. Which is going to feed you with knowledge and understanding. Let's see something. Edit 3 and 26. Same book, Galatians. So I can get this out of my books. Listen to the book. For ye are all the benim of Allahim. Say that, uh uh. For ye are all the benim of Allahim. By Amunah. Y'all hear what he said? By Allah, by who? By Amunah. See that? By Amunah. They call it faith. We don't know anything about faith. Everything they knew, they understood. They could correlate it with something. Well, he told Abraham that he was going to make his seed multiply. What did he give him? What did he, what did he use the symbolism of? Or the who? Or the cook of beans. They understood the start. They had a, see, our people couldn't discern the faces of the, what they call the Pani or the Shamayim. He had to. How was he going to correlate understood? He said, I'm going to make your seed to multiply. Like what? According to what? What's the resemblance? What's the symbolism? So he had to give him something that could symbolize. Hold you got. See that the 37th chapter, 37 Barashith. Barashit 37 and 6. Listen to the book. And he said unto them, mm -hmm. Here I amar you this Kalamut. See that? He wants to tell the Kalamut is this dream. So we learned about him having a dream. What did it let us know? That description didn't tell us. Huh? That he was a Nabi. He said, that's what he told Musha. That's what he told Aharun. That's what he told Marine. He said, if there be a Nabi among you, he said, I'm, I, Yahuwah, will make myself known to him how? In a car, in a car, hold on, car, hold on, which would be a dream or in a kazoom. Isn't that right? He let him know. So we say he kept sitting here telling him about the dream. The boy never told him he was a Nabi. But we learned how to, so you know why we knew how to associate it? Because of the Aubrey, we saw the resemblance. Because we had not, and we knew what he was. You won't find where he told you that he was a not be that we're going to call it. People say a prophet. We look up a prophet, the actual word of a prophet is somebody that sue says. Sue say. That's what they do when they come down, they sue say. You know, Yahoo told us about it. He said, a not be, all of them that came before him, he said, they never told him, Peter. He said, they never nobbled nothing good. Nothing to. He said, they always nobbled against. Isn't that right? That's what he looked because our people would never be in obedience. So whenever they seen a new bar coming, they already knew it was coming, it was always going to be against them. Hello? Why y'all think they wanted Yahushua gone? They said that Yahushua was a Nabal. Why you think they wanted to kill him? Because they never, they never, they never nobbled nothing to toward him. It was always against him. He said they always nobbled against him and against Malku, which they called kingdoms. He said always. He said anyone ever came and they nobbled something to He said we always waited till it happened. So when he came and they knew him as being a Nabal, it only made sense for them to kill him. They need to get him away from them. Because they felt like the Nabal put too much pressure on the people. That's what they told Yerim Yahoo when he came and he told them. They told him, listen, they said the land couldn't take it. That's why they took, that's why they took Yerim Yahoo and put him inside of a cave, let him down inside of an old well. They said the land couldn't take it. It was too much pressure. All the people were hearing how Allahim was against them. Allahim was going to destroy them. Allahim was going to send them into captivity. Allahim was going to vex them. And it was only because of their behavior. So people think when they get rid of people that are telling the truth, it's going to be better for them. The only way it's going to be better for you, you got to stop doing the thing that equate and cause you to be in the situation. That's our problem. Get rid of the problem. And for us to get rid of the problem is to get rid of the person that identified the problem instead of getting rid of the behavior that caused the problem. You know what we do for a headache? What do you do? Take an aspirin. Take a BC. You know what you need to do? Find out why you have a headache. You get rid of that, you can get rid of the aspirin. Isn't that right? 
we rather take something and cover it up and don't address it. Mr. Yahuwah want to address it. Because he realized this is another part of your interception or our or. You're missing something. We are or we understood life. Listen to the book. Which I have Kalamu. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, mm -hmm. and lo, my sheaf is a rock, and also stood upright, and behold, your sheaves stood round about and made obedience to my sheaf. You see that? He recognized that what is sheaves? That's when you take something and you bind it together. You'll take it and you'll wind them up and you'll bind them together. He said, my study, you ain't going to believe what happened. When they came and they found Yahushua, who know what they did? They bound him. All of the other ones were standing around him and they didn't realize what happened. That sheep had stood up and they bounded him. Yeah. He said, we were binding sheep. He said, my sheep stood up above the rest of them. That's why they came and they bound him. Listen. And his arkeen said to him. And his brethren said to him. Shall thou indeed reign over us? They already understood exactly what that meant. And he was bound and he was up above them and they were below. That meant that they were shakar him. I mean, they were going to prostrate themselves. They were going to do obedience to him. See, everybody understood. And look what he used. He used something they worked with. She's a typical lady that you had to get them and you had to bound them up together and you had to set them up. And they realized that when Allahim gave us Yahushua, Allahim had set him up. Listen. Get out of the concept. Nothing is just um, just happens. Everything has he had an idea. And then put it and get us to understand the idea. He made sure we all work in the work in particular area that help us to understood it. Now he didn't have to explain it to them. He just told them, Behold, we were in the field and we were buying the sheep. He said, And my sheep stood up above the rest of the sheep. They said, So we gonna all sit and we're gonna worship you? Because if yours is higher, that meant yours been exalted. That means ours is below. That's what it means to prostate yourself, it to go down. Something simple, something they can understand, and something they already work with. Nothing mystery, nothing go to heaven and come back down. It had to be plain so they can understand it. Listen. Or shall thou indeed have dominion over us? They understood that. Listen. And they hated him yet the more for see his kalamut. See that? They understood that. They didn't like that. Because they put him in a high position them. So what they did, they hated him for it. You know what Yahushua told her concerning that? It was written well? That, that wound up being written in your tour, written in your law. You ain't going to believe what they did. They hated him without a cause. All he would do was just tell him what he had dreamed. You see how it worked when he told you they hated me without a cause? When Yahushua told them that he was going to reign over us, that he was going to be Malak, don't you know they hated him the more too? That was the whole purpose of getting rid of him. Listen. And for his dabarim. See that? And for his words. Listen. And he, Kalamut, yet another Kalamut, and told it his Akim and said, What did he say? Behold, I have Kalamut, a Kalamut more. Yeah. And behold, the Shamash. Uh oh, the sun. And the Yarak. The moon. And the eleven Kukabim. And the eleven stars. Did what? Made obedience to me. And what did this mean? And he told it to his Abba and to his Akim. And his Abba rebuked him and said unto him, What did his father tell him? What is this Kalamut that thou hast, Kalamut? He want to know what is he dreamed. Tell me what happened. Shall I. The Shamash. And thy aim. The Yarek, which they call the moon. And thy Akim. The eleven Kuka beams. Indeed come to Shakar ourselves to thee to the Adumah. How do they understand it? Which means they had to know how to read, discern the face of the sky. They understood that the moon, that the sun was first and that the moon spiraled out from the sun and that the kooka bean, the stars, all came from there. That's why I told you about the 11. Because there were 12 of them. And he knew, I ain't going to buy down to myself. You 11 going to do it. Which means they had, so when he told Abraham that his seed was going to be multiplied just like the descendant, just like the, the kooka beans. How do you understand that? He know I'm going to need a moon, a wife. I'm going to have a lot of kids. Yeah. And he did it. Yeah. In the 25th chapter of the book of Bar uh, Barashi, tell you the same thing about his kooka bean, by all his concubines he had. Yeah. And all the different, it named out all the sun. You just heard about the son that he had from um, 
from Couture, he had more sons than that. Yeah. Because Abraham had to understand, you got to understand, Abraham was a man. He going to understand everything through his senses. Abraham had a lot of kids. They'll just tell you about the two. I don't know why they'll do that because they leave you and they leave you kind of stupid. Then you start talking about it with all faith. It don't make sense. He don't know nothing about faith. He knew what actually happened. Abraham had a lot of kids. Yeah. His kids couldn't be numbered. That, why you, let me say, why you think you don't have a proper number of them? 25th chapter of the book of Barashi. Let's see what they told you. Because you know, they don't get it. Nobody knows what faith is. Faith is a Christian hopeless way. That's right. That makes no sense. They don't understand that. He told, he showed this man so your descendants are going to be just like the like the like the cuckoo beams. How many of y'all can count the stars? All right, let's see what happened right here. You tell me why you ain't got a number. This is Barashit. They call Genesis 25 and 1. Listen to the book. Then again. Uh -huh. What does again mean? You had one before. Listen to what it's saying. Then again, Abraham took a, a shot. Now it told you again he took a wife. So how many wives did he have? He only had two. The other going to be concubines. Listen. And her shim was Keturah. Her name, and see, he told you her, her shim was Keturah. Tell him what else happened. And she bare him Zimran. See, see Zimran, who else? And Jokshan. Jokshan. And Medan. And Medan. And Median. And Median. And Ishbak. Ishbak. And Shua. And Shua. And Jokshan. And Jokshan. And Sheba. And Dedan. And Edan. And the Bedi. And the Bani of Dedan were Ashuram. Yep. And Letushim. Uh huh. And Leuim. And the Bani of Midian were Ephah. And Afar, and Hanak, yes. and Abida, and Eldiah, all these were the Benin of Keturah. See that? He said all of these were the children of Keturah. Listen to what else he told you. And Abraham gave all that he had unto Yasakah. See that? He gave all that he had to Yasakah. They call Isaac Yasakah. Listen to what happened. But unto the Benin of the concubine. Pay attention. He not even talking about Keturah. He just told you the children of the concubine. These are other wives he had. That's right. He just told you all he told you about was the one that came from Keturah. That's right. Now he just told you about the other ones. Yeah. He said to the children that were of his concubine. Tell them what he did. Which Abraham had. Which Abraham what? He had some more kids beside what you just learned about. Tell them what happened. Abraham gave gifts. And did what? Sent them away from Yasakah. His and men. He sent them away from Yasakah, his men well. While he yet lived eastward unto the east country. Which gonna make sense. Which means he sent them to well. I, I, What was that? Asua? I did that. Asua? They call it Asia. Asia is a Greek name. The Greeks named it Asia. It supposed to actually meant where the sun actually rise. That's why they mess people up and people ask them, say what they said, where Israel is. They say, oh, it's in Asia. Because you're stupid, then you think it's Chinese. Most of our people don't know no better. How you going to know no better if somebody don't teach you? That's what we thought Asia meant. Every time we say Asia, we always assimilize it with people that were Asian. Is it U W? U then A. Yeah, S U A. Yeah. Yeah, S U A. Yeah. It's the actual name. And the Greeks came and they call it Asia. U W A. Appreciate that. Y'all know my English is very bot. So we learned what they actually call it. It was actually supposed to symbolize where the sun rise. And the reason why that gonna make sense for you. Where do you find the cuckoo beans at now? They where the sun at? The sun rises in the Shamaim. Where's the cuckoo beans gonna be? When it makes sense for Abraham to send his son, where the sun gonna rise? When it makes sense to put the stars where the sun at? When it makes sense, that's trying to tell you the man had enough sense he could understand. I'm looking. Where does the Shamash sun, where does the Yari, and where does the Kukabin do? They all dwell in the same place. So what I'm going to do with my Benin? I'm going to send them where the, where the Shamash is. What are we talking about the carcass? Where the sun is, that's where they all gather. He understood that. Where the carcass is, who going to understand that? People that watch animals die and watch vultures come in. Vultures going to dwell, they're going to sit around where a carcass is. Right? Well, he looked at the same way with the Shamaim. Don't you know that they're going to sit above and they're going to hang right around the Shamaim? They're going to hang right around the sh uh, Shamash? So, how many, how many kids did Abraham have? Why you don't know? 
You don't know because they multiply just like the Shamaim. They multiply the Kukab Mim. See, the man didn't lie. These folks think they know something. Let me tell you what, these people are so stupid. They trying to outsmart out of here. You can't outsmart it. He'll beat you every time. Yeah. Everything he told him, he didn't lie about it. It was right. The reason you don't have a number, because they can't tell you, because it was so many. People keep running around thinking the man had two kids. He didn't tell you how many he had by the concubine, did he? I can't, because if I told you, it's going to be a lie. That means I could number them. They spend too much time. You know what I don't try to do? Waste my time trying to be smart than somebody to give me a brain. <laughs> don't even, the man give me a brain, I'm trying to beat him thinking. It don't even make sense. He said, it's as much that a, a boy can be as his Adon. A servant can be as his master. He said, that's the best I can get out of it. He said, hey, I can't get above the man. So he told me as much as I can be as, and what am I going to be at that point? Who? A, a, a who? A Ben? I'm looking for something else. Tired of what y'all learn. The um, I can have an appearance. That's an appearance. If, an, if a servant can be as his master, then he can appear. He can have an appearance. That's a, When they came to get Yahushua, what did Yehuda have to tell them he was going to have to do? Why? Appearance. Guess what happened? If I show you all the kooka beans, pick out one that's different from the other one. So I understand the um, appearance. I can, listen, get it out of your mind. There's nothing going to be fabricated in your mind. Listen, it's all a mind. Everything we associate him with is what we can clearly see. What makes clear? Or, or light. That makes clear. What we have to get rid of? Shadow. Interceptions. Interception can be relationship. Interception can be self. Interception can be health. Interception can be wealth. Intercep interception can be ambition. Interception can be stubbornness. It's a lot of things that come in your way. It can be interception. Keep you from getting our ore. Yeah. Let me show you something. 2 Corinthians. I'm going to finish up on him. 2 Corinthians. 4 and 1. Before I get through with that, give me that 326 so I can get Galatians off my book. 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 4 and verse 1. You know what? People don't I shoot all that from the top right here. Out the dome. No notes, no script, no cue cards. I walk down through and I do it. Just like you give it to me. Yeah. That's it, man, honey, I, I don't get it. You know what I do when I come to, I try, I make sure I'm honest. Yeah, that's right. Just got to be honest. Honest is being honest with yourself first. Where you at, what you're doing and what you need to do. And being committed. That being honest, you got to stay committed. Yeah. I've seen a lot of, you know, things come along, a lot of things happen. But I stay committed. I am. I just like that. Who said my foot had well not slip now? I ain't even tell no lie. My foot had well not slip. He said I see the prosperity of the other Russia. I'll be lying by saying my foot had well not slip now. I almost done slip now. I ain't gonna tell him. I ain't never. You better quit that line now. Quit that line. My foot had well not slip, but I don't wait it. I'm just trying to wait it. You know who gave me confidence to do that? Daoud did. Yeah. He told me don't fret myself because of Rasha do That's right. He said Rasha people said he'll soon be cut down. Yeah. He said he's going to wither just like the green herb. That's, right. That's what kept me. He tried to tell me. Even Daoud, he said, when you see these folks, he said they don't have no bands on them. He said they strength it firm. He started watching and realized, though, I'll let him take them down. Yeah. Yeah. You just wait long enough. I don't set my eye on nobody. Nobody don't drive me out. I'm good. I'm committed. That's right. Listen, you can show me anything you got here. I guarantee you ain't going to move me. Yeah. You ain't going to move. I've been settled in the way. Now, I don't see it. I don't see it. all these works in here. I see where this stuff going to. Everybody, these folk come with this stuff, they copy from the Amat. That's how they, the, the Greeks, the Romans, all these people, the Europeans, everybody copy from us. That's right. Everybody copy. We're not no copy of these people. That's right. We picked up some things in Mizraim, but we don't show these people by true worship. Yes, sir. And Yahushua told him, he said, the time going to come when the true Shakar is going to come. Yes, the true worshipers. Yes, sir. And he said, we worship them, it's going to be on a mat. Yes, sir. And we're going to worship them. That's how we're going to worship them in truth. Yes, sir. And we're going to worship them in the Ruach. That's right. Hello? Yes, sir. That's what he told him. He, you ain't going to believe it. He said, the Abba was seeking such. Yeah. He said, all of him is a Ruach. And they that worship him, he said, you got to do it that way. That's right. I ain't know. I would never go play no figurines. No, I wouldn't hang that stuff around my neck. No Jesus Christ, nothing. I wouldn't have it. Well, he came. He spoke to us in the fourth chapter of the book of uh, 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 Ooh, Allah Shemut. They call Exodus. The man said, "You didn't see nothing." He said, "You didn't see." He said, "Let you be driven to go and worship him." Right. I ain't finna hang no sun, no moon around my neck. I'm not putting that stuff around my That's neck. Right. He said, "You didn't see it." He said, "I ain't show you no no similitude of no man or no female." That's right. 
He said, I ain't show you no fish and no sea. He said, I ain't show you none of that stuff. That's right. All he can call me to hit the bar. Yes, sir. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. That's all it is. I called you to hit the bar. Yes, sir. Listen to the book. For ye are all the benim of Allahim. Say that, for ye are all the benim of Allahim. By Amunah. Say that, by Amunah. That's what Abraham had, Amunah. Listen. In Mashiach, Yahushua. In, the, in Mashiach, Yahushua. Listen what happened. For as many of you as have been immersed into Mashiach. What happened? Have put on Mashiach. See that? Where, where we get that from? Who do we get that from? We got that from when Yaakov came along and he wanted to get the Baraka, his key, his brother. He went and he took scared his mother told him to go and kill a goat. He took the skin and put it on. So he could mimic, so he could do what? Have a resemblance. It's Aubrey. That's what it was. He had a resemblance. His father was blind. His father, it came by his father, his sight had gone. So what did his father have? He had an interruption. That's what blindness is. It's an interruption. If you can see it, then you can't see it. That means you had a disruption or an interruption. So his father was old. His, it was dim. He couldn't see. So that means something came and interrupted. He was planning on giving the Barak, which is a store gift upon Asu, who they call Esau. But because your cold had gone and put on the skin of the animals, so he would feel like his brother Asu, who was a hairy man. And he put the smell of his brother Aki, and he put the smell of his Aki on. So we understand about that because our offerings came up, and you know what it became Allahim? Aroma. So we understood the smell. Because the smell, the smell was associated with what he did. This man, your cold was a field keeper. He was a planter. His brother was a hunter. So what did brother gonna smell like? Anybody ever been hunting before? Deal hunting. You know what you'll put on? Dose scent. Because you're associated with what he do. You, you must be, or you sell on smell. You say you must have been fishing or something. You smell like fish. You associate the work with the character. Right. There are different things, behavior, there are smells, there's dresses that you have. Right. So Asu was a hairy man. Yeah. He going out the animal that had hands well. So he started to resemble his trade. So in order for Jacob to get the Barak from his Abba, his father, he had to come and do what? Resemble. How I understand that? The man just told me for a minute you that have been immersed in the Mashiach had also put him on. How I understand this? But I'm just probably probably need to go home and pray and get in the spirit. None of this stuff makes sense. None of this stuff makes sense. Everything he gave us to understand is clearly seen. Y'all got me? We got to understand this. How do you understand put on? That means he gave an aroma. That's what we learned about Yahushua. Paul's got Ephesians 5 and 1 right quick. We talked about aroma. Ephesians 5 and 1. I'll come back and get 2 Corinthians 4 and 1. I'm still finna get Galatians 4 and about 26, 3 and 26. I don't know what I'm going to do because you're right. Let's see. 5 and 1. Ephesians. Listen to the book. Hold on. Be ye therefore followers of Allahim. And do what? As dear Benin. Say, as dear Benin, and do what? And walk in Ahab. Listen. As Mashiach also hath Ahab us. That's right. Ahab. And did what? And hath given himself for us. For a who? An offering. For an offering? And a sacrifice to Allahim. See, that makes sense, wasn't it? It made sense for him to do that. That was our only being. That's what Abraham had to do. He had to give his being for an offering. Right. His son. That's what we had to do. He was our son. We were going to have to give him up for an offering. Right. Hello? That's how all of him was going to know that we are hard. Then. That's what he said with Abraham. Yeah. He said, I want you to take your son, Yassikah, your only being. He said, I want you to give me and make an offering. And after Abraham took him up the offering, the Malak told him to hold his hand, not an angel. The Malaki told him to hold his hand. He said, because now I know you are hard. Then. Yeah. Isn't that right? So he was our bent. We had to give him up. How's we, come on. The man just told me to walk in the hall. Yeah. As Allahim had, a hall does. What did Abraham do? To show that he a hall Allahim. Well, he said, you got to give it up. A lot of stuff you don't realize. All this is to show the proof of whether or not you are hard bent. When Allahim came, he spoke to him. He said, Allahim had come to prove you. He came to master you, which is test you. To see whether or not you are hard bent. Would you be obedient? Man just told me to walk in the hall and the Mashiach also had loved us and had given himself for a what? An offering? For and us, an offering and a sacrifice to Allahim. For a who? A sweet smelling savor. Aroma. That's what he recognized when your cold came. He said it has our suit. He said but the smell is like one that been in the field. The smell he smelled it was still your cold smell. Hello? 
He started to smell like the grains. He smelled like wheat. He smelled like corn. I assume would have been a man smelled like hunt. He would smell like flesh. Because he was a hunter. He would smell like the animal he was trying to hunt. The one thing you got to do is you got to learn how to get the right scent if you're going to try to attract something. Men do it when they go out. If I'm trying to go out and pick up a woman, it ain't going to make sense to put on no perfume. I'm going to wind up getting a sister. I ain't hunting for no sister. Ain't that right? Put on cologne. Because I'm going to get one that's going, they're going to attract. That's, mm, that smell good. That's conversation. What that is, before we talk, now I got a phone number. Now I got a date. Now I'm finna knock you off. <laughs> Ain't that right? I'm a hunter. Yes, That's right. That's what a hunter do, right? Yes, I, 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 listen, I gotta tell it to you how you understand it, right? Yes, so what you hunting for, you gonna put the scent on. If a man gonna hunt for buck, he gonna, he gonna put on dough scent. That's what he gonna come to. That buck is looking for a dough. So he gonna put the scent that's gonna attract to get him so he can get the kill in. So now he just told me what I'm trying to say and I'm trying to seek salvation. He just told me what to do. Then I got to learn how to track because he said and fall after. Walk in. So he's teaching me how to do. This is going to become a lifestyle. We talked about the Aubrey word would be halak. H-A-L-K. Pull it up for me. Do um, Mexican Hebrew. They'll put Hebrew. Put a halak. Let me see what it is. Are y'all understanding this? Yes, sir. That's how you get salvation. People don't realize salvation is, is, is first got to start mentally. Every time you're going to be something, you got to have it's a mental concept first. I got to be able to picture it. That's why they use picture grounds. So I can correlate and then I can associate. Yes, sir. I'm trying to obtain something that I never had before, right? So I got to get other correlations so I understand. A lot of people say they do. They don't really understand. Hey, you just can't. Sometimes, you know how it is. You just can't explain it. Yeah, it's called you don't know what it is. That's right. That's what it's called. Mr. Who ain't got nothing, you can't explain. You don't know what it is. That's right. That's why he gave us a teacher. That's why he gave us our oar so it can make clear. All right, let's see. Did he get it up there for me yet? We're still waiting? Why you do that? Let's go ahead and get 2 Corinthians 4 and 1. Why you pull up Halak? Because he told us to follow out there as dear Benin, children, and walk in Ahab. Even at the Mashiach here, Ahab does. And giving himself for an offering and for a sacrifice unto Allahim for a sweet smelling savor. They call a savior. He did not do that for a savior. He did it for a savor, which was an aroma. We learned that from our offerings. We also had oils that we presented. We had different ones, the frankincense, the myrrh, different things we took. And we, because you burn them, it gave us. Y'all, you know what's amazing? People, you burning oils now at home. Yeah. Because they want to scent their house. That's what all of him did. See, they don't realize he gave you something you understand. You take oils and you can burn them. Sometimes people can take stuff like years ago, you hear Alfred, you can take an orange peel and burn it for it's in the bathroom. So we understood about it when they brought different things they made up for offering. Oh, no. Hmm. We spent too long in ignorance. Too many years we've been ignorant of this stuff. We, we can't serve like that anymore. At time out for people sitting around like Allahim said, saying, no, Allahim. He said, everybody going to know me. It may say for people to make sure you understand what you're being taught. Because it's going to determine where you spend eternity at. All right, come on, get this for me. I feel it at 326. All right, come on, get this 2 Corinthians 4 and 1. Galatians 326, I can get 2 Corinthians 4 and 1. Y'all get some information. I hope y'all taking it down. Yes, sir. Sound like they preach. We ain't just shooting that out no air, just throwing something out. I'm getting something we can be checked. Y'all, everything we got out of here, you gotta be fact checking. Y'all, you, you gotta fact check it. This, you putting your soul on the line for it. You should be. Everything you got on the line, you need to know what you believe. <laughs> Listen to the book. For ye are all the benim of Allahim by Amunah in Mashiach Yahusha. Mm -hmm. For as many of you as have been immersed into Mashiach have put on Mashiach. There is neither Yehudi nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For what reason? You are all one in Mashiach. See Yerusha. that? You are all one in the Mashiach Yehusha. Listen what happened. And if you be Mashiach. See that? If you be the Mashiach. Then are ye Abraham's seed. That's S-E-E-D-S? S-E-E-D. 
Because he said to Abraham and to his seed was the promise made. He didn't say under S-E-E-D-S as a many but under one. Now he just said many of us that have been immersed in him, that put on the scent, that put on the clothes, that put on the dress, the apparel. He said now we become one. He said now if you be the Mashiach, if you actually belong to him, then are you Abraham what? See. That's who the promise was made to. So the only way for you to actually get and obtain what you call salvation, it had to be favor. That's going to make you Abari. That's right. Because if he only said it to one, how exactly did you get it? Which means he had to, so that's why he came, he had to refer to him as the Ben of Man. Ben of East, son of man. You know where a son comes out from a father. And a mother. That gave us a correlation that we had relationship. That would put all of us in the same bath. Right? That's the same house, same family, in the same land. Y'all understand that? I guess I'm confused with exactly. How do y'all kind of correlate your salvation with him and your connection? If the man said he only said it to one. He said, I'm right. He was only talking about one. He was only talking about one cooker bean the whole time. One the whole time. He said, I never said all of them. I was talking about one. Then the only way, how was going to happen? Then you were going to have to be grafted in. You were going to have to be grafted in. So you understand grafting. When you take two things and put them and cause them to come together. Because he said, now if you beat him in Shia, now you're Abraham's seed. He didn't say S E E D S. He said S E E D. That means now you're talking about the promise belong to you. Acts 2.37. Acts of the Apostle 237. Listen to the book. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their lob. And said who? And said unto Cuff and, and to, to the rest of the apostles. Who? Anashim and Akim. Do what happened? What shall we do? And what did Cuff say? Then Cuff said unto them, Repent. And Turn be, from what you're doing. And do what? And be immersed. For many of us have been immersed in the Mashiach. Have also put on the Mashiach. Listen. Every one of you. In the what? In the Shem of Yahushua HaMashiach. Because the name of Yahuwah is a strong tower. The Sadiq went in and he said they safe. Or saved. Listen. For the remission of Kotah. See that? For the removing of it. Listen what happened. And ye shall receive the Barak of the Ruach HaKudah. For telling what happened. For the Shaba. Uh-oh. -uh, for the promise. Is unto you. Not to Abraham and to his seed was the promise. It made S E E D. He didn't say under S E E D S as a minute, but unto one. Now, since you've been grafted on and through you being immersed and putting them on, just like a, your cove did with Asu clothes, and put it, he received the Barak that didn't belong to him, that actually went to Asu. Now he's telling you now the promise is unto you. And. And, and to your Benin. And to who else? And to all that are afar off. Even as who? Even as many as Yahuwah our Allahim shall call. You know what uh, you know what Yasaka did when he caught what he did with Yaqo when he came in? He called him. He called him so he could barack him. He told him to come closer, he wanted to give him barak before he moved. He said, Allahim is calling us now so you can get the barak or the Ruah Hakadash. Because the promise was only unto one. Now, all the way you're getting it because you've been grafted in. Because of an appearance. Because of knowledge. Hello? Because of favor. How you get it? If it was only the one, how did you get it? Because he favored you. Leave it. Even in nature, you'll find in the animal kingdom, you'll see a puppet, a dog have puppets, you'll saw a, 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 a animal have cubs or whatever, and you'll see one that'll be bigger or stronger, you'll see another one die. You ever seen that before? Or some put, you know why? Because nature favors some. Right. Yeah. Allahim had to let you see something you understand. You know, how many of y'all had a dog before it had puppet? And you'll see you know, one of them straggling and it dog. That's because our, nature favored them. Before they were born. You know that nature favored them. Yeah. Allahim gave us that concept so you would understand. He don't want you to have favor. He wants you to have under, um, not that you would understand that there is actually favor. You'll see when you'll grow stuff sometimes, you'll grow plant, and you'll see one that doesn't grow, that doesn't grow, and you'll see another one. Simply because nature favored it.
So now when you see you growing and you becoming productive, you getting this information, it's only because your arbory, Allahim has favored you. That's how I understand favor. Everything I understand about him, I can correlate without him. He said, what knoweth a man? Then what was it again? That's all I know, the things of a man. I don't know nothing about no shamanism. I ain't never been to no shaman. I know the things of a man. Right? And all he needed me to understand it. So he started to give me other things. It become descriptive to me. I can understand it from what I know from nature. Hello? <laughs> Just like I learned with the book. I learned the same thing with nature. He told what a man had long hair. Who, who teach him? What scripture? He said nature teacher. He told you nature teacher, man, he had this a shame to him. He said, I ain't give you no book, but I told you nature teacher. Right. I know all of him teacher too. They understood what all of him taught. You know how they did it? Because they would put on sackcloth. You know what that was for? He was for shame. Yeah. So you understood that. The nature showed things that would be a shame. Don't you know a man in bear? I said, excuse me, miss. He turned around like, what? I, brother, I mean, <laughs> and now he had to feel like, this guy thought I was a girl. Yep. He thought I was a lady. Yep. That's shame to him. Yep. That's a shame to him. Got it? Yeah. So I understood that. Got it? Yeah. So all these things that people try to make impossible are not impossible. We understand because they happen around us all the time. All right, come on. 2 Corinthians 4 and 1. I'll try to get y'all finished up in a minute. I know way out there in it. My whole thing, though, are you getting an understanding? That's what we need. How am I serving the man when I don't even understand the man? I don't even know the man. How am I serving? The man said, who shall call upon the shimmer you who shall be saved? What do you want to know then? How did, he said, how am I calling on I me? Mean, who ain't even heard nothing? Ain't even heard. How, I can't even, how, I got to believe something. How am I going to do all that? Then I got to have somebody tell it to me. That person got to be sent. He said, the scripture said. That's scripture behavior. Oh, he got to send him. Hello? He told me what happened. He said, it really, he said, how beautiful the feet of them. That's right. They missed it because he told Mushad to come up. He told him to take his take shoes, shoes off. off. That's right. The man had beautiful feet. We were looking for that pattern. Hello? Y'all didn't know Yahushua had beautiful feet too. You know how we found out? When he wouldn't do what we told him to do. What were we supposed to do to him? That we have. Listen, the book told you what's supposed to happen. See, that's how important it is for you to know your tour, your law. Your law clearly told you that when a man brother had died and his wife come and he was supposed to take his brother and rip up a wife. We got that from who? From the book of Barashit, the 37th, what, the 38th chapter? That's where we got it from. When they wouldn't take, when or, when uh, Aaron had error and he had Yahuwah destroyed, none of the brother wanted to take him up. Nobody wanted to take his wife. Well, it came along that Mushak gave us law. He said, if that man refused to take him, you were supposed to spit in his face. And she was supposed to take his shoes off his feet. He probably been known that the man with loose shoes. Because he refused to bring up seed to his Aki, his brother. Well, you ain't going to believe who his brother was. Adam. Adam was the first person we knew to be the Ben, which is the son of Allahim. Well, Yahushua was his brother. Well, under that, under his brother's rule, guess what happened? Men died from sin. Yahushua refused to take people and bring them in and they die under sin. So he wouldn't take you. Why do you think the book told you they spit in his face? You thought they were just spitting? They spit because that's your law. You were supposed to spit because he refused to do it. He refused to answer them. He spit in it, they spit in their face. And they, the book told you they took it cold. Why do you think they left his shoes on? Butt naked men walk around with sandals? Come home, for they had to take his shoes off. You ain't gonna know why, how beautiful them that preached the dog, did the bar. And you ain't gonna believe where he was gonna be at, though. He said he was gonna be on a mountain. That's why they put him on the sky. These folks don't know that. Listen, listen, people don't know what they think they know. I don't know why these people wait time instead of going to, you ain't gonna do them make a mess, because they don't understand nothing. Listen, take any folk in the account, say, explain to me what it's about these feet. Explain. The folk didn't even know that when Daoud sat there, he went in the morning, Daoud went up a mountain, he took his shoes off. He ain't gonna believe it, he had beautiful feet. Yeah. Sometimes I say that they don't pay attention. I do this number him. He said, How beautiful the feet of them that breached the bar. Yeah. I came to bring some good news to you. That's the truth. He knows something about my feet. You heard the man preach the bar with beautiful feet. Paul, I could have let Paul preach. He said he lost a pinky toe. He said, honey, you want to shoot me in the pinky toe? So we can't use it right now. I had to throw that out there. You know what I said? Because Haywood told me. I got a bad habit of repeating everything Haywood said. <laughs> Remember he said, Haywood had your mumbling grumbling. 
able to send me pictures and I send them out like that and have me, I don't know why I do that. But I want to repent for Haywood getting me off like that. <laughs> Isn't that right? Haywood know he's guilty. Anyway, so now we start to understand that concept. People don't, need, people don't why you think he told Musha to take it? He had to make sure the man lined up the book. How, what you, why you think he made him take his shoes off? I be trying to tell you people don't know what they think they know. Come on, finish up. This is 2 Corinthians 4 and 1. I'm just talking. But no man condemn it. That's right. They ain't going to be able to condemn it, though. Listen to the book. Therefore, see, we have this ministry. I say the same thing. You can see for yourself whether or not I got it. What we receive, son? As we have received Rakan. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that's, that's Aubrey. We receive mercy, <laughs> favor. That's how he said we got it. said Rakan. It only makes sense to people that's Aubrey. He said, we receive recom, which is mercy. What we do, son? Faint not. And we ain't stopping. Yes, sir. Tell them what we did. But we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. What did we say renounce was? We quit. We resigned. Smoking, drinking, homemaking, committing adultery, game banging, selling dope. Man, we quit. He said, we did. We quit it. We don't know all that stuff. We renounced it. We gave it up. That's why I can talk about it. I don't do that stuff no more. That's right. Listen. Not walking in crafty. Not doing what? Handling the bar of Allah, deceitful. But by what? Manifestation of the Amman. What's the, what manifestation? What were you for manifestation? Oh, Lord. so what did he just say about manifestation of the Amman? That means no interception. That's right. We're not trying to come in and intercept it. But by manifestation of the who? Amman. Which is the true. Doing what? Con commending ourselves. To who? Every each country. In the sight of who? Of Allah. <laughs> and this is what he told you, though. But if the bar be hid. It is hid to who? Them that are lost. You just can't get it, huh? You just can't figure it out. He said, hid to them that are lost. You know how you can hide something too? By covering it. Mm. That's how we learned. That was important for him giving the male the circumcision. Mm. So they understood about taking off the veil. They understood right. about the uncovering. Right. Huh? They understood it when they went inside. When we had we learned the concept of it as well when we built the when we started when we first built the tent. You had the first part when you went into the Magdash. Which they call sanctuary. We don't use that word. Those are Greek terminology. It's the Magdash when we come in the sacred places. And he told you about the second place. What, what stopped you from getting the second place? Veil. The veil. Guess what we found when Yahushua coming down here? He had on a veil. Yeah. He did. When he asked come, who was he? Some say he was Yerim Yahoo. Some say he was Yerukanon, the Immersal. He asked him, he said, who do you say I am? He said, Dara, the Mashiach. The Ben of the living Allah. He said, Baraka, the... Sign Shimon, call you born of Yuna. He said, For who did it? He said, For flesh and blood hadn't revealed it because flesh and blood was a veil. He said, But my Abba, which is Shamaim, which means the uh, or didn't have no interception. See, the veil he had on which was the flesh, it didn't disrupt or interrupt. That's why the book teacher in the book of Galilee, in the book of Philippians, the second chapter, the book said, Being in the form of who was it again? That would be appearance, that would mean that he resembled. He thought it not robber to be what? Equal with, which means he wasn't an interruption. He wasn't an interruption or a disruption. It was the same thing. That's why he said, he that has seen me, you ain't seen no disruption. He's going to get me confused. Don't even get me confused. The only way you're going to see all of he was going to have to wrap it up. That's the only way you're going to see it, to wrap it up. He told you, when they thought that he was a ruach and they was a fry, he said, you don't see no ruach, have no flesh and no bones in me. That's right. He told him, you don't see that. So what had to happen? He had to wrap it up. Yes, sir. See, you got to understand the concept because people get confused. People start going and doing stuff, you're going to make a mess. I teach y'all more than one set. You take that whole tape I give you. You take a, Man, it'll take them 10 years to get this stuff unscrambling. <laughs> I give them direct instruction. They're going to mess it up. Mess it up. Cause they're not gonna be honest. I, this I'm trying to do is take all of the take all the jibber jabber out and make sure we got clear understanding. That man said, "Therefore, seeing we had a ministry and we have received mercy, we faint not, but we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in crafting, nor handling the bar Allahim deceitfully, but by manifestation of the might, committing ourselves to every man country in the sight of Allahim, which is the um of Allahim." Now. But if I were the bar be here, it is here to who? Them that are lost. Listen what happened. In whom the Allahim of this arise. See that he let you know there are all there are all other Allahim. That's why we had to signify what a name. Other people have Allahims too. But I was different. We differ at him when we tell he Yahuwah. Isn't that right? That's how we learn with who they call Elijah, whose name was all Yahoo. They let us know that Yahuwah was Allahim. 
Is that right? We got to separate. Listen, you have to distinguish your life from everybody else. The book said, though there be many that are called Elohim, whether in Shamaim or in the rock. He said, but those that are saved, it ain't but one. It ain't but one. Ain't that right? By whom are all things. And Yahushua HaMashiach. Ain't but one for us. It's plenty of Elohim. Don't ever get around to it, but it's only one true one. Yeah. You can make anything out of him. You can make your husband, your wife out of him. You can make this chair. You make a car out of him. Mm -hmm. Well, you start to get homage to it. You start to get praise to it. You start to get servitude to it. You work hard to make sure you don't lose it and keep it. That's all of him to you. You give your servitude to it. A lot of y'all got all of him. You just don't know it. But he said, but us that are Yasha, which is saving the liver, it ain't but one. I just ride a car. I don't let no car ride me. That just man, the last time you get stuff, you get relationship. Before you know it, the relationship becomes so restricted on you that it causes you a whole lot of time and effort you got to put in, and more than you need to get a Mr. Elohim, the Mr. Yahuwah. I don't want one. I don't have one like that. I don't need nobody. Your mind and your love ain't toward Mr. Yahuwah. I can't do nothing with you. That's just being honest. It's just nothing I can do with you. This got to be my everything. I said, listen, when I die and I leave here, when I move, I, I only one person got to go down. That's going to be me, and I got to give an account. Me and my wife get killed on a car wreck together. I still got sin for myself. Hello? I still got sin for myself. They can put us in a twin casket. I still got stand in judgment for myself. He said, as at a point of honor, honor sheen, what was it? What? After this, what happened? Look. That one way, no. He said, that time you get a son, you've been in judgment. Yes, so the Mashiach was once offered to do what? That's why he came down. He had the better sins of men. How did that work? Now, that, that, that's, a, that's, a, now, that's a good conversation. Now, this shows you Christianity working at its best. Read that for me, 927. I'll be reading. I'm going to teach you how to work this. It ain't hard. They just don't know it, though. See, because if you don't know the truth, you're going to mess up. You explain it to me. Abarim, Abarim, 927. I'm going to show you Christianity at its best, which is its worst. The best of Christianity is the worst of it. Because if you don't understand it, you're going to make a mess out of yourself. You don't even know how to read. I just shoot it to you right quick. It don't take that long. Just got to be honest. Listen to the book. Hebrews 9.27. That's what I said. And as it is appointed... Hold on for a minute. What did you hear the reading you repeated it? What did you hear the reading you repeated it? For the people. I dive over on you like a bucket of water. Yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. How you throw a bucket? That thing be coming from everywhere. You throw a bucket of water. Once it come out of that bucket, that thing everywhere. That means I be going through that just flipping over that to him. As it is a point under who? On the sheen. Tell me what happened. Once to moot. Y'all pay attention that once to die. Tell me what happened, son. But after this. The who? The shafet. He said after that, the judgment, the shafet. You who are going to shafet us. So listen what happened. So Mashiach was once offered. To bear the kartar of many. That's all I need. Explain that to me. Let me get this is what you do right here. By faith. I want you right now by faith to reach down in your spirit and get it. It don't work like that. That don't make sense. Let me show you how it worked though. Mm-hmm. Ooh. All are. Shemut. They call it Exodus, but the name actually means, and these were the names. 20 and 5. Oh, I like Shemut. It means, and these were the names. Exodus makes absolutely no sense though. This is another Greek concept. Exodus like exit. This is retarded, okay? It was not exit for them. They learned the names. When Moshe came down, he told you who, and he talked to you who, he said, they're going to want to know what is your shim. That's why it was important. They learned what were the names. That's how they work out. This is the 20th chapter of the book of Uah and Shemut. They call Exodus 25. Not sure how they work. Listen, this is for GP. Listen. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. See that? You should not bow down yourself to them. Listen why. Nor serve them. Or nor serve them. Tell for them why, I, son. For I, Yahuwah, thy Allahim. Or uh, who? Am a jealous Allahim. Pay attention to I. He said, I, Yahuwah, is a jealous Allahim. Tell him what you do, son. Visiting the iniquity. I visit the who? Iniquity. What you visit the iniquity at? Of the Abba. Of the who? Abba. Then you call him son of man. If he's a son of, that means he has a father. He said, I visited the of the father. Tell him where? Upon the Benin. That's how he sat down and he told you, so Yahuwah once bared the sin of many. He couldn't bear your sin if he wasn't your son. Yahuwah told, see, that was, listen. 
I wouldn't let a Christian teach me nothing. You had to dumb me down to be a Christian. I can't afford to be stupid. How exactly did you understand the book that told you, told you who was once offered a better sin to me? How can he bear your, your sin if he was not your son? We come this far by faith. Leaning on. It don't, it don't even make sense. Explain to me. Tell you people, explain how did he better send him in it? The only way to better send him in he had to be our son. That's what the book told you. I, Yahuwah, it was a jealous all of him. I visited the nickel of the who? Abbas. Upon who? Benin. How long? Until the third and fourth Tuladah. If you go back in the book of Matthew and you start looking, you'll see the all of him, the Yahushua came in the fourth Tuladah, which is the fourth generation. Forty-two generations. How exactly did y'all understand 927? That faith stuff don't work. It don't even it don't make no sense. It don't even make no they, how did how would they understand how would y'all understand this? I mean, I just believe it to receive it, to believe it, <laughs> and retrieve it. It don't work like that. This is your armor now. It's got to make sense. You got to know if it, how exactly if somebody asks you, how did he bear your sins? Because he's my son. He visited my iniquity upon my children. To the third and fourth general, to the two of I just took all the faith out of it. Just popped your balloon. <laughs> up, up and away in your beautiful balloon. It don't even make sense. Don't y'all know everything he gave up we can clearly see? This is your Torah. What sort of things are written for a time? What was it written for? Learn. What I just read here, was this written before our time? Yes, Did we just learn something from yes, it? Sir. Now we threw patient comfort of the scripture. Now you got it. That's simple. That's simple. Father made a fool out of us. Man, you, listen, people just be reading stuff. They don't know what they read. When he told Philip to go and join himself to the chariot with the unit, he asked him, do you understand what you're reading? Except who? You know what you got to do? That? Let me take my shoes off, help him out. <laughs> Kick his shoes off in the chariot. Let's let go back over this again. That's right. Ain't that right? A lot of folks been reading, they don't understand what they're reading. That's, right. That's how you don't get the benefit. The benefit don't come in until you get understanding. Yes, sir. That's no benefit that you don't get understanding. You got to have understanding. You know, there's a lot of people got like, you go to jail, you know, they'll give you a benefit package. A lot of people don't know how to use it. And they'll get into stuff. Some people don't even realize they have a legal shield in their packet. They didn't even know it. For they have certain clauses and certain um, certain allowances in their packet. You know how they didn't even read. They had the packet, they didn't even understand it. Yeah. The folks say, you know it was a help packet. We got one for foreclosure, help you use it in bankruptcy. We got rules, they needed money, they didn't even know there are certain things they benefit packet would allow them to go draw early on money. Yeah. But not understand their benefit packet. That's what happened with this book. These folks went and tangled this book all up and messed around, and we didn't understand the benefit pack then. Right. Your Husha was a benefit to us. Yeah. He was in there, we didn't know how to use it. Yeah. Now I learned how to use the benefit pack. I don't commit a sin. He said that the soul that, what was that again? Yeah. What he going to do? Yeah. How many of y'all done sin? Then they didn't want to post to die. Yeah. So, so, so what got that off of you? Yeah. Huh? The bin. That's how important he was that day. That's how important the bin was to us. Because Yahushua said, that the, listen, when Musha tried to go up for you, after you had messed up, your grandparents, you the same people, when they messed up, he said, I'll go down pre adventure I'll go and see he, if he, Yahuwah, he'll blot them out. But when he went up, Yahushua said, no, he said, the one that sinned against me, he said, that's what I'm going to blot out. Yeah. How many of y'all done sinned against Yahuwah? Then you know you're supposed to get blotted out. Who did that wind up going to? Is that by faith? That's by understanding. Yep. That's by knowledge. That's how I know I'm Abari and I can't be Hebrew. I prove up the Marbury. Mm -hmm. It's descriptive. Yeah. I gotta have knowledge. I gotta have appearance. Hello? Yes, sir. In this 2 Corinthians 4. I try to get y'all finished. Y'all get a lot of information. Yes, now, what y'all do with it gonna be on y'all? Right. Y'all get so much information. Listen, these folks call me for, oh, I wanna get a mercy. I, I said, I don't, I don't, I'll stop. I don't just immerse nobody to call me on the phone. I don't do that. I don't know nothing about you. I said, I need to know something about you. I need to shepherd you. Make sure where you at. So I want them people. I need to know my member because I got to tell you. Who just said? He said, I know my sheep. That's right. You can't help folks. You know, you know folks will go down somewhere. The folks don't even know you. You need to know your sheep. Yeah. Musha knew him. When, when, when Yahuwah told Musha to get down, that he was going to destroy y'all, he said, you know the people set on mission. You know him and I know him. He said, them people set on mission. He said, you're going to destroy all them. And what was it again? One man. That's how unified they were. One man. He listen. A lot of times he spoke as one. He was talking about many. Yeah. 
Isn't that right? He saw Yashara as one man. All them people as one man. Because he knew who Yashara was. His men. He ruled like I do. He ruled as Allahim. Now you know what they're going to mean. That Yashara was a resemblance. When they seen Adam in the garden, even Kaur told you they called Eve. She said, when the serpent asked her, the Nakash, he said, hey, Allahim said this. She said, Allahim said, we shouldn't eat it. Neither should we touch it lest we die. That meant that Adam was a resemblance. Adam was Aubrey. Because he had knowledge. How is he going to teach it unless he had knowledge? They knew her, but they knew she knew him because his appearance. He resembled him. Hello? Do y'all understand how deep, did, how deep what we got going? How much understanding you really got to have if you're trying to seek the plan of salvation? It's deeper than what we're thinking. This is a lifestyle. This ain't something you pick up part-time. This is a consistency. But you can't do it when you don't understand it. Come on for that 2 Corinthians chapter 4. What we got, 4 and 4? Yes, sir. But if our daughter ain't be here to hear them that which are lost, and whom the Elohims of this arise have blind the minds of them which believe not, lest the light, of the glory is the bar of the Shia. Is the who? Who is the who? Who is the image of Allah? See how we knew that. I tell, that's why I know he wanted a blocker. Now he just told he was the image. See, people got Yahushua confused and thought he was a shadow of the Abba. He said, no, no. See, see, he was the image. That's the image. Listen. Should shine unto them. See that? That's what they don't want him to see. So you know what happened? Now you had a veil over your eyes. That veil didn't allow you to see. And that's why people didn't know who they were. He knew who he was. They were confused. The book told you, he said, had they known, they wouldn't have crucified him. That's what 1 Corinthians told the second chapter. He said, none of, the, none of the rulers of this arise knew it. He said, had they known it, they wouldn't have crucified him. Which means that there was an interception on light. That's why the people putting themselves in a situation. We understand that to understand why people don't take on this concept. We try to stay with people and be with people that don't understand it because they have an interception of light. And that interception come in because he told you why the, uh, the Allahims of this world, riches, fame, friendship, family relationship are all blockers. They are all interception of light. And people will use these things. These things will keep you from sin. It don't make sense that all these people, it don't make sense because you have blockers. You got things you want to do and you don't want to be contained. You don't want to obey. You don't consider your soul and you don't wind up dying. These people take you right with them. He told you why they can't. He says, let's the uh, oil. We're shining to us so all the keep shining. They got folk that keep calling. He said, if sinners enticed thee, <laughs> you know what they do? They do it anyway. You ain't got to go all the time, do you? I know the God I serve him, he, you can miss. He ain't got to be there all the time. Those called interceptors. You know, Honda came out with a motorcycle, they called it interceptor. These folks don't realize you got a lot of interceptors in your life. You got to know when to get rid of them. And that's what hurt to you, it'll shine into you. See, once you get light or oil, it may clear. A lot of stuff that been dimmed to us, well, now when it comes through or oil, it's clear to us now. The book said invisible things are all of him are clearly seen. Well, something invisible, you can't see it. Now he says clearly seen. Stuff that been a hidden truth to you, what they call a mystery, that's all a hidden truth. It's been here, you just didn't know it. Now we done took it off and then you can see it. <laughs> what what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Are we going to keep walking in stupidity and ignorance? Or are we going to walk in intelligence? It's time for the walk and be the people that call us to be. That's the whole purpose of why we go back over this book and we go back out, out hard, Romans 15, 4. I always use it because I tell you, you got to have a base. Where I start, I need a base. Once I know I got a base, then I can work it from here. From now, I can go anywhere with it because I know what it's got to entail. This keeps me in a line. I know when I go back, it's got to make sure it's going to be for our profit. Come on, finish this Oreo. I had you get Oreo 24 and 12. I'm going to finish that up so I can get y'all finished. I'll try to get y'all out of here. Some folk be tired. Mike came in sleeping. Yeah, he came straight in the door sleep back down. That joker be sleep. He wouldn't sit out there. He started sending them pictures out early in the morning. He sent them out today. I said, I don't know how y'all come in at 1.30 serving, 1.35, 1.40, they be sleep. That mean y'all got interceptors. That, listen, they're for every, and I don't say that because of hard. I be under with y'all. See, y'all go to these places. These folks will let y'all sleep and mess around and do all what you're doing. Nobody's helping y'all if they're not telling y'all to mind. This, listen, the most precious thing y'all got is your soul, your nephites. You can't afford, you're not getting no information while you sleep. You're just killing time. When y'all come here, y'all know that book said you probably be more ready here to get a sacrifice of fools. If sleeping could still benefit you, why Yahushua kept telling the apostle to wake up? He said, lest they fall. What was it at? 
He let them know that that sleep going to come in. It's going to be a blocker. It's going to be an interrupter of light. This stuff, y'all, how many of y'all done got some real key information today? Now, if you were asleep, you ain't get it. Something came and interrupted. What was it? He told you what it is. the Allahim that's arise. Let's the oil will shine. That thing will come in and shine out. It'll make clear. People don't want to be. If people see stuff clear, they know you got to break a lot of their commitments. Yeah. Man, that's a whole lot of stuff I ain't want to know. Because you know the truth, then you know what you got to do. Man, I was a kid's shit. Man, I don't know who came to one of damn Santa Claus. That's the best criminal I had in my life. How many of y'all, you can't have no better criminal you without Santa Claus. Uh, Santa Claus, how many of y'all remember Santa Claus criminal? Those are some good criminals. You ain't never had no Santa Claus criminal. How many of y'all had Santa Claus criminal? Is a Santa Claus criminal the best criminal you got? Believe in somebody that come here and leave shit in your house. You ain't even got no fire play. And you said, lying yourself here, came down your chimney. I know when I was saying, how the hell he gonna get in here? I started to cut a hole in the roof of my damn self. I said, how the man gonna get in here? <laughs> we ain't had no cake in that I could leave. I was, we had nothing to leave him in there. We were hurting. <laughs> we were struggling. I'm waiting here to bring us something. We had him get him something for he damn sure better brought them, them reindeer and him and Grady gonna lose it. He gonna lose his damn mind. He found some reindeer sitting in the living room. <laughs> <laughs> Who the hell got these reindeer there? That messed up my whole crew. But he used to come in there though. He used to come in there and leave my little stuff and then be right on back out of there. Then I found that one no crew. It just took, just took the sting out of that thing. It did. Because you know what happened? When a might come, a might make you adjust. You got to come with them. You got to come there. You realize, I can't live that lie no more. I remember, man, I had to sit there and I had to, I had to pull teeth, get them damn things, loose and stick them on my pillow. Wake up, you get a quarter. Then you got a dollar. Then I get the coming guy, baby. It was 75 cents. She said, this started going on. Well, I was looking like it. She said, I'm going to take the whole rack out of it. I got a hundred. I just took the whole rack and the gums and all that stuck them under there. But you know what? Because you like believing that people were giving you something for nothing. You did. It was just the pleasure of believing that something was coming in good happening to you for nothing. Now I'm telling you, it actually happened. They just put off on fairy tale. Mr. Yahuwah, they're coming giving us something for nothing. That's what he saw us at when he came down. But he said, I'm going to make you something. I'm going to give you something you hadn't worked for. Something better than what you're going to give me. What, what, what the hell that one going to do to rotten to? Man, what are they going to do to run to them fell out your mouth? Nothing. If you be the truth told about what Mr. Hood going to do to you at Ronnie, and me too, Ronnie, what are they going to do with us? The fact that he favored us. The fact that he come and give us something more than what we could ever give to him. In the sixth chapter of the book of Mick, y'all, he said, wherefore shall I come before you? Yeah. Shall I come with, with, with 10,000 rivers of oil? With, with a thousand of uh, uh, he goats? He said, my firstborn, the fruit of my body, for the, for the sin of my soul, could tell my soul. He said, oh man, all of he has showed you what is true. What's right? He done show me what's right. That's right. He said, to walk justly. Yes, sir. And show we calm. That's right. He's going to show me. You tell me you'll give me eternal life. If I just walk right, I'm willing to pay for this thing. I'm willing to give up whatever I got to get to get it. He said, I don't want you to do it. Be just. I don't want you to do it. To live right. That's right. I hadn't earned that favor. Yes, sir. So I follow the same footstep they follow. Abraham, y'all yes. caught your cold favor. Yes, sir. Man, give me favor. Yes. That's what you're looking to do. You want to show all of him had favored you. Yes, sir. For everything in life you felt like you never got and you deserve more. You didn't get it. He said, but I favored you for this. And now, call we done got weak and you want to compete with these people like these people. You rather put more of your heart into something out here they're going to perish. Gonna perish. He done told you the right pass away and the lust thereof. Yeah. But he that do it the will out of him will buy forever. That's what the son tried to tell her. He said, the son will buy forever. You know how he said, buy forever? He said, I've been doing the will of Elohim. That's my hope. What, what's, y'all, what's y'all hope when you die? What you hope is going to happen? What you hope is going to happen? You know, some of you, you know what they think about? I ain't thought that far. I don't want to think about that. It's scary. Let's just be honest. You got to die. Just like I do. You ain't got to think about it. You still going to die. I just put that out of my mind. Can I? But you got to think about it. If you're living, you, everybody living is a, com- a candidate for death. That's right. Mr. Hood came and touched so many people in our life we know. How long before he come and touch you? So we sitting here so we can make preparation. We sit here to make sure when we leave here, we try to follow some steps to where we can look and ensure I said that we're going to resurrect. That's my hope. He said, except a seed fall into the ground and, and die. It does what? That's what I got to do. Die, that means I got to kill out of everything. That's what Yahushua did. You know, they brought his mother. She was there on the tube. He was there. You know what he told her? He gave her away. He looked at when he died. I can't hold on to you. That's 
Right. Everything I got, I got to let that go. He right. told you, I said, woman, he said, told us, said, woman, you behold your son, your Ben, Ben, you behold your aim, your mother. He said, for that time, Yehukunah took it into his house. That's right. And then he, ran, he was getting ready to die. You know, people don't, you know, do y'all understand when you got a duty, the process coming on, that we got to be ready to separate from your own mom? Yeah. You got to separate from Yehukunah. That, that was, he said, that was the Methodist that he had heart. Yeah. We don't even set ourselves to start with the stuff I got and people I got. I started moving more kind of away from it. I started getting more information. Even my boy I tried to get him more information about things I realized. I'm making preparation to leave him. I don't want to have to go, but I tell him like Yahushua said, it's expedient for you that I go. Yeah. It's expedient. Yeah. He, he told him, we want him to stay. He looked at, I got to go. You know why? Who know why he had to go? Because of what? Not only that, the book told you it's a point of the unseen wants to die. That's why we had to see him coming. Listen, you had to come see your Savior, your Yasha, come in and die. That gave me a comfort. If he came and lived right and he moved, he left, and all of him raised them up, I got confident if I follow him, that all of him will raise me up. It said, like all of him raised up the Mashiach in front of Moot, so he also quickened your mortal body. Yes, sir. I'm looking for all of him to make me alive. Just like, listen, I understand that process from putting seeds in the ground. Cover them. Put them in the ground. Die dry out. Just like a body do if you leave it out. It's going to dry down. Put it in the ground. What all of him called to happen with nature and with the command of his debar, he said, I can resurrect that seed and give it new life. That's how I understand resurrecting. Being with all of him. Taking on life again. So I understand that I can die and I can live again. These people say, I'm dead. I just believe. I don't just believe nothing. I believe it because I can see it. Yeah. I can see a literal seed, put it in the ground and watch the behavior, and I'll see that thing break the ground. You know why? It's not possible that he can be holding. You know, when you put a seed in the ground, you don't just put just a little bit. You put it deep down in the ground. And don't you know that seed had to get itself up, take root and get itself up? Then don't you know I believe all of he can do that with nature, all of he can get me up? That's my confidence. I got to have confidence. That if I get in a car wreck, if I get shot, if I choke, if I just go in my sleep, that I'll get back up. That's right. I ain't never been in no grave before. That's right. I ain't never been put behind no wall before. I got to have confidence that all of him going to raise me up like he do with calling nature to raise up a seed. Yes, sir. If, if nature can be faithful to a seed, don't you know all of him can be almost not in me? That's right. So I'm willing to separate myself. I'm willing to detach myself. You got to be like a, what's that thing? It's a space shuttle. Start out whole. But in order for it to get where it's going, you know it got to start detaching. The higher it start off good. It's a now blast that thing, tear that thing going. But as it keep getting up, in order for it to keep elevating, you know it got to let something go. You ever seen that? That thing just, poof, you see stuff that you start seeing it. Because I can't go up unless I separate. That's what Yahushua did. He was the first space shuttle I understood. Listen, mother, got to let her go for I blast off. That's a weight to me. He says, you a weight. Don't y'all know why that man had to send his mother out and get her away? Why? I can't hear you. Because your law told you what you got to do. You got to obey your, your mother and your father. That's the first commandment with promise. So if his mama told him to come down, he had to come down. Otherwise, he'd break the law. You know how smart he was to get her away to somebody else? Now don't transgress the law. That's how the book worked for you. He don't have nothing that mysterious like the people told him. It's simple. The law was clear. Children, obey your father and mother. This is the first commandment with promise that it might be well with you. But if I give away, they ain't my mama. Yeah. Now I can obey Allahim. Right. He even told me to come down to marry. The Americans serve Allahim better than him that they married. Right. So he told you about somebody to marry. What do they care about? Amen. Things of the world. My wife want to go somewhere. My wife said, we, we, we were going to have a date night. I took it. We went by and got something to eat and date night. I said, what? Day. I said, we dating now. I said, I got time for it. She said, let's make a date. I said, I, I ain't got time for no date now. I'm busy, right? I, said, I got so much stuff on my chest. I said, I ain't got no time for no date now. We dating now. I said, what you think I've been doing the whole time and laying in their bed? That's a date. That's right. Should I meet you in that time to go to sleep? That's right. <laughs> Every night. I ain't going to be no, I'll be right here with you. That's date night right now. Yes, There's a lot of stuff they want to do first. Go on vacation first. You need, to, you need to go on vacation. I said, listen, why my mind at what I'm trying to do now? I'm trying to make sure. I'm trying to make, make preparation for the permanent vacation I got to go on. This the one that troubled me more than anything. I got a date. I got to meet this man. I can't be wrong with what I'm believing. Yeah. Everybody out here saying they believe something. Don't you know I can't get this wrong? This is how critical this. When I'm talking to y'all, I don't want you to just take nothing that pops out of somebody's mouth. You need to understand how to tell with your law. That man said, What's up? Things are written for a time, written for your learning. That we through patience come to scripture, my head hold. Most of the people don't know why that man gave away his mother because he would have sat here. She could have prevented him. When he came to the wedding, what his mother told him to do? She said they wanted wine. She 
she said, he said, I ain't got nothing to do with you, my own ain't come. He still had to make that wine. That's the Torah. They people, they people don't know what they believe. They're Christian. Why he made wine? Sweet Jesus. That, no, you got law. He had obey his parents. His mother told him they want wine. He can't go against the scripture. So his mama told him to come down. He had to make wine. They wanted me to tie. What are you going to do if she told him to come down? But if I just told her to behold your son and said, son, behold, and he know he did, he took away from that at that time. Because they understood. Nothing we got. We don't have this complexity people done gave us. All he wants to understand. When he told Copper Coot, they called her back. He told her, I will stand upon my watch and I will see what I will answer when I'm reproved. And he told me to write the Kazo and make it what? Make it plain. Make it plain. Yes, sir. He said, make it plain. So he didn't read it, can run. Yes, sir. He said, for the cousin, just for an appointed time. What you think happened when they came and they told Covenant that Yahushua had rose up from the moon? What did he do? The book said they ran to the sepulchre. He made it plain. Yes, sir. He made it plain. That's why they can't run. He said, he didn't read it, he'll run. Yes, sir. Because it wasn't but for an appointed time. Yes, Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Goodness. So what we believe? Believe y'all know why you said what we're doing. The whole thing we're observing right now is Shafar Teruah, the Teruah, the sound, the blasting of the, the, the trump, as they call it. The whole thing was teaching us sound pattern and wave. We talked about that sound pattern way and looking for what we talk about breaks, breaks in sound pattern and way. See, when the Shafar was blown, it had to give a distinctive sound. One sound allows to know who was supposed to come first, the next one let us know. On the, when it came to the dog, which camp was to get up first? So these people were taught, and they were taught in distinction. And they knew how to distinguish sounds, just like a mother do with a child. You might have a mother, the baby crying. You say, "What's wrong with that baby?" She said, "Oh, he's hungry." She picked that up because you know what she did. She started to learn sound pattern and waves. She started to pick up patterns of behavior. She realized when he's hungry or she's hungry, they tend to do this. Or you say, "What's wrong with that baby? He's sleeping or she's sleeping." She started to watch pattern and behavior. How is it you don't know patterns when Mr. Yahuwah are talking? How do you don't know how to hear the voice and understand the voice of Yahushua? That will be your bend. How much, can you tell when AJ or Nara are sleeping by sound by behavior? You can tell when they're hungry by sound by behavior. How we don't understand when Mr. Yahuwah requiring things of us? How we don't understand when Yahushua speaks? That's our child. You don't know your own child? When a cry come out, you supposed to know. You know, when you were sitting in Mizraim, you know what made Mr. Yahuwah come and get you out. He said, I heard your sob, your cry. He said, I came out. He said, I understand my child when they cry. Then Mr. Yahuwah, when Yahushua was sitting on the tooth, you didn't understand that your child was in distress? You didn't understand your child was crying out about your behavior? That's dangerous. But you know what? He let them learn their natural kid to show you, I'll use this against you in the day of judgment. When I shop at you, I'm going to use this against you. Because you should have heard this cry. That's your bed. He said, that's your child. You know, my, my, my grandbaby, she's my own granddaughter. She got a dog. She'll get it. And she got, I, said, I said, don't drag your baby. Pick your baby up. She got a baby. She'll have a baby. She put it down. I said, wrap your baby up. Your baby don't be cold. Try to start teaching her symbolism. That's a baby. She got some cousin. She knows she got to pick it up and she got to go. They pick up certain things because they watch other things. So they start picking up resemblance. You know who does that? Aubrey. They start picking up certain things. She realized her baby got to eat. She realized that baby been hard. That baby got to eat. Don't you know Mr. Yahuwah knew that about us? Because you got to know your child. So you're listening for sound way. You're looking for patterns. That's what we look when the Bible, when the, when the Shafar teaches us about how showing yourself a pattern of good works. So we look at what's consistent. A lot of stuff that we do, we're real inconsistent. That depends what way heavy on our heart and what we are hard more than Mr. Yahuwah. Because we are hard the way we're supposed to. That should come and intercept that light. That's just being honest with you. If y'all were honest about actually trying to be saved, a lot of stuff you ain't got about her. It's just right. I mean, man, I was just, listen, it's better for you to end in the light, having some cut off, some gone, than you to sit here and keep it and go to Sheol. Yeah. He said, well, the maggots don't die and the fire ain't quenched. Can you imagine that? Maggots all over your body and the fire. They told you one of those are maggots. And he said, the fire ain't going to be quenched. The reason why they maggots because he told you every sacrifice is going to be salted. Maggots look like white salt grains. See, most of these people don't know what they believe. They don't know why they think he's going to have a little one. It's going to be maggots. Maggots come out of dead bodies. So when we had sacrifice and we put them on altar, he had to salt them. 
He had to saw them. He said, we're going to do it you. I'm going to saw you with maggots. And the fire ain't going to never go out. That's enough to me to keep me from trying to go down. Yeah. That's somewhere I don't want to go. So wherever I had to cut away or break away from, or wherever I got to stop, wherever I got to turn away from, I always want that mind. I want that hard for him to, I don't let that be greater than what he told me to do. Let me get this and I finish up. Most high willing. 24th chapter. We ain't getting finished none of this, but it's, it's all the same word though. Come on, fill this up. 24th chapter, book of Ori, y'all. They call it Luke. Remember, Yahuwah shining. Y'all shining, not Yahuwah. It had an O behind it if it's the whole name. So when it's just the Y'all, it's the shorty part. So now we know that Y'all shining. So we got to make sure we don't get nothing to break. We got to stop all the breakers. Let's see what happened on him. This is Ori, y'all, chapter 24, verse 12, 13, 12. Let's see what happened. Listen. Then Zerah cuffed and ran unto the sepulchre, and stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves and departed, wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. Mm -hmm. And behold, two of them went the same hume to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs. What happened? And they talked together of all these things which had happened. What happened? And it came to pass that while they communed together and Tell reasoned, me. What happened? Yahushua himself drew near and went with them. What happened? But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. How many times Yahuwah done came down and Yahushua done tried to speak to you through the bar and your eyes been holding? Your heart been covered? Listen. And he said unto them. What did he say? What manner of communications are these? That you do what? That ye have one to another. That you do what? As ye halak and are sad. See that? As you walk together, as your manner of life is, and you sad. Listen. And the one of them whose shem was Cleopas answering said unto him. What is saying? Are thou only a stranger in Jerusalem? And then what? And has not known the things which are come to pass there in these Yamin. Listen. And he said unto them, What things? Mm -hmm. And they said unto him concerning Yahushua of Nazareth, mm -hmm. which was a Nabi mighty indeed, and the bar before Allahim and all the arm. What happened? And how the Rosh Kohanim and our Sharim delivered him to be condemned to moot mm -hmm. and have crucified him. Listen. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Yasharal. And what happened? And beside all this, the Yum is the third Yum since these things were done. Listen. Yea, and certain Nashim also of our company yeah. made us astonished which what? were early at then, the sepulchre. What happened? And when they found not his body, they came saying, that they had also seen a cartoon of Malachi, which said that he was alive. Yeah. And certain of them, which were with us, went to the sepulchre and found it even so as the Nashim had said. Listen. But him they saw not. Listen. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of law. He called them fools and slow of law. To do what? To Amon all that the Nabi'in. The fact they wouldn't believe all that the Nabi'in had did what? Have spoken. Ought not. Mashiach. To do what? To have suffered these things. And to enter well? Into his kabu. He's trying to tell her. He said, should he have done that in order for him to enter his kabu? See, had they actually believed the scripture like it was, which is Amon, they would have understood it. And that's what he's going back over like nothing. There's some interceptors in him. Listen. And beginning at Musha. He went all the way back through and started at the beginning of the books, your Torah. Listen. And all the Nabi'in. What did he do? He expounded unto them. In what? All the scriptures. The things. Concerning himself. Listen what happened. And they drew nigh unto the village. And did what? Whither they went. Listen. And he made as though he would have gone further. Yeah. But they constrained him, saying, abide with us. Y'all understand that, though, don't you? Don't y'all understand that? Y'all were taught this. He had, did he go in because they told him to do that? He did not go in because he, he went in because Yerim Yahu told him that. Yerim Yahu said, why should he be as a man of stunning or as a wayfaring man that turned out the way for the night? 
He had to do that. That's scripture. See, it's important for you to know why. You'll read this stuff and know this is just something he said. This was something he had to obey. That's how important the scripture was. Them asking him to turn in with them did not happen, did not make him do it. That did not constrain him. What constrained him was the scripture. He's trying to get up to a point to realize the scripture had to be the thing that really has the greater bearings on you than anybody else's conversation. Because when people can't persuade you by conversation, people will move you as well. He was constrained by the scripture. Hold you guys. Say that. What is it? Yahoo 14? 14 and 8? Let's see what he said. I right, make sure y'all understand. It makes sense when you, see, when you see where it comes from. You'll read this and know there's some fairy tale. And they loved Jesus so much. And Jesus called, they loved him. Jesus came on in because huh, he could see they loved him. And they constrained Jesus. Now, let's look at what the book says. Y'all from Yahoo. 14, we'll start at 7. Listen to the book. O Yahuwah, though our iniquities testify against us. See that? Do our iniquities testify against us? Do thou it for thy Shem's sake. He said do what? Thou it for our Shem's sake. See that? We told him to do it for his name's sake. Listen. For our backsliding. Where we got that name. from? We had to ask him to do that for his name's sake. Who? From Musha. That's how Musha got him not to destroy us. That's how important the Shem was. When he was going to come down, he told Musha he was going to destroy all us in one man. He told him, he said, but the Mizra, he said, they didn't hurt you. He said, how you done brought these people out? And how you were like a pillar, how you was a pillar of fire at night and you was a oar in the day, a dark cloud in the daytime. He said, if you destroy all these people in one man, he said, then they going to look and say, you couldn't deliver. So his name say, that's why he told him to take these people and keep going. His name say, see, people, don't, you think he just came up with this on his own? <clears throat> This pattern of behavior, we're looking for sound wave patterns. This is a pattern. You got to get him and hold him to his namesake. So your name don't mean shit. You know it. You lie. You ain't no good. You're a hypocrite, false pretender. You run with the world. So you don't understand what how a man have credibility with his name. The man got credibility with his name. Listen. Years ago, they don't know that old people, before they came up with pulling credit, you could go to make a store and folk get to you because of your name. That's that. That's that. He let him get it. That's how I know him. He, if he got it, he gonna put it. These four names don't mean shit. Don't mean shit. That's terrible. Don't you know your, the book told you a good name would rather be chosen than riches? <clears throat> Folks don't even care about their name. They don't care. That credit ain't gonna do nothing. You need to have name. He had credit on his name. Listen. For our backslidings are many. See that? Our backslidings are many. We have Qatar against thee. See that? They remember. He said, we sinned against Allah. And now, what happened at this point? What were we looking for? See how important that is? If they just said that, the book told about them in the book of uh, Olive Shemuel, that, uh, the Shemuel, that Ali told him, he said, if a man sinned against one, he said, the Shafi the judge him. He said, but if a man sinned against Allah, he said, who can entreat for him? So what we've been looking for the whole time? We need somebody in treat for us. If the book done told us there's nobody in treat for you when you sin against Allahim, that meant the people. So what's other things are written for a time, written for our learning? We through patient comfort of the scripture. This is what they were been looking for. Our backslide in a minute. We have could talk. We committed sin against you. Now who gonna entreat for us? Listen. Oh, the hope of Yashara. See that here the hope of Yashara. They just told that we had hoped it had been him. Listen. The Yasha. Thereof in time of trouble. See that to deliver the Savior in the time of trouble. Listen. Why shouldest thou be as a stranger in Look, the land? What did what did Clever tell him? That's when he came and, they, and their eyes were whole. They told him man he was a stranger. They said you must be a stranger. Now he just asked him, what did he just say, Yam Yahoo? Why shouldest thou be as a stranger? I told him for these folks don't know they're doing this book. It ought to be illegal for people to have this book. That's right. Because you ain't gonna do but mess up. You read stuff, you don't even know what you're talking about, you don't even know what you're doing. That man is telling you right here, that's why they told him he was a stranger. Say, you must be a stranger. But now, yeah, I'm Yahoo saying, why should you be a stranger? And listen to what else he told him. And as a wayfaring east. That's a traveling man. That do what? That turn at the side to tarry for a Layla. That turn and stay for a night. Come on back over, son. You got a 24th chapter book of Oriol. I tell you, people, that's what I do for a living. Give people understanding. I wonder what that'll make me if I do that. That that about make me a raw. You can send it. I resemble it. Hello? Yes, you who are favoring me to give me that ability. Man, you who are favoring me to give me that type of ability. And it don't because he favored the arm. 
He had to favor the people. He don't favor me for me. He favored me for the people. Y'all don't realize, y'all feel like I'm a good teacher. That, that's a credit to what kind of people you are then. That's a credit to what kind of people y'all. That's how all of him view you. There's some people, they got some crappy teachers. They got some dishonored people. They don't realize why. That's a credit to what kind of people they are. Listen to the book. This 24th chapter of the book of Oriol, they call Luke, what's it, 24, 26? 29. 29? Back me up a little bit. Make it 28. Listen. And they drew nigh unto the village. See that? Listen what happened. Whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. What happened? But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us. Stay with us. Tell them why. For it is toward evening. See that? So why should he stay there for the night? Listen. And the yum is far spent. Yes. And he went in to tarry with them. And what happened? And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them. What did he do? He took Lakam and Barak it, and brake and gave to them. Yes. And their eyes were open. See that? So he just took away the interception of light. The disruption of light, the shadow that kept them from seeing the veil, he just took it away. When they sat down at meat, he broke bread with them. And you know what happened? Their eyes were open. Then what happened? And their eyes were open. That they did what? And they knew him. That's what I come here and do now. Your eye will close before I open your eyes. That way, Husha told me he came to do in the fourth chapter of the book of Ori. He said he came to get recovering a sight to the blind. Yes, sir. That's what he came to do, come to get recovered. People looking at natural blind. He looking at the most dangerous blind when you can't see the ball. He said, this be here. They hit them that lost. You can be naturally blind and make it in. You can't be raw blind. This is what they said. And he vanished out of their sight. What happened? And they said one to another. Did not what? Did not our love burn within us? While he did what? While he talked with us by the way. That thing, see that thing, see, that thing put a yearning inside the people. Why, why you ain't got one? And listen to what else he did. And while he opened to us the scripture. That's what they said did it for them. All he did, he made clear. See, they had a lot of misconception. He went back over the scripture. They said, we understand that thing perfectly now. We had a real dense understanding about it. But once he sat down and went back over the whole book with him again, that's how I can see, you ain't believe it, I can see clearly now. Y'all hear me? Now I can see. That's what we're doing. We're trying to get people to a point where we can actually see and we understand and we grasp the concept. That's what we've been missing. This whole plan, Mr. Yahuwah knew we were going to fall. He already knew. So you know what he do? He had to prepare a way. And the way been set for it, and now we can see it. It don't make sense to see him sitting around stumbling. It don't make no sense to keep sitting around committing no control. It don't make sense to sit around and keep trying to get outside of the plan of what the man said. Everything outside the plan what he said ain't going to make it. It don't make sense to walk according to what he calls to do. All right, that's good. Give me your hand. Up.